so good uh, good evening everyone so hope all of you are doing well so this is my fifth episode uh, photography adda and today is very special we have a very special guest with us uh, who is uh, felix zimmer from uk and uh, i'll be talking about a bit in uh, introduction about him so felix is uh, actually a freelance photographer as well as a photojournalist and he has uh, different kinds of working experience in various fields of photography as well as uh, different selling experience also so he is very good at uh, advertising photography he he has done several food photography different kinds of uh, festival photography and also uh, he is going to share his experience in the field of uh, selling and also we are going to learn so many things about uh, his uh, from his work and as well as uh, from his experience so let me introduce uh, uh, felix and let me put him in the screen so hi felix how are Hello. you hello i'm very good thank you very much that was a lovely introduction and i'm very glad to be here though okay so what is the time right now uh, so is is it it is it a good evening or what oh that's that's a good question i think it's just after good morning so let's say good afternoon it, <laughs> so yeah. it's uh, half past 12 at the moment here in london UK. Okay. So uh, first, uh, uh, I'm going to start with uh, how did you, how and when did you, uh, uh, you have taken interest in the field of photography? To be honest with you, this is since I'm a very small kid. Um, I had my grandfather as certainly my role model, and he is a photographer himself. So he's a, a hobby photographer, like many of us are, or to start with and um, I remember playing with his uh, cameras he had stored in his house and even though there was no film in it it was a great pleasure for me to run around and pretend to be the running journalist with his camera in the hand and this is how I probably started like getting passionate by uh, photography and then um, yeah through like family holidays spending time with my mother who was into who was in photography as well all these kind of things developed and uh, photography became like one of my major interests for sure yeah so this is how it all started okay so that's great and i'm very much curious about the first camera that you have used so the first camera, um, like I said, so when I started trying to trying to get first pictures in, it was back in the days when there was no digital cameras. Uh, so I started with film, but more or less um, on an automatic mode, and it was for some snaps that I took for my family and with my family, um, mainly on the camera, my mother's my mother's camera, which was a Nikon. F80 as far as I remember and then when I was 14 years old someone gave me a camera as a birthday present and that was my first digital one it was one of these compact cameras and then it developed and I think my first rather professional was this one here which is a Nikon oh, D300 which is I think pretty much a still a very good decent uh, absolutely. camera. absolutely it has a like magnesium body and uh, i think this is a full frame camera right no it's not full if frame not, it's, it's, it's not, not full frame. frame no definitely okay. not and this is the reason why i then produced uh, uh proceeded to other okay. camera bodies later on but that was some sort the first camera that i used to to do my first assignments with okay fine so uh as you have told me like you have started with films camera so in today's world, we are in the digital era, right? Uh, like uh, we are using phone cameras, we take several photos and we keep like taking, taking pictures by pressing the shutter. So oh, what yes. do you think about that? So is it important, like uh, should we start with films first? Is it really important? Um, it is rather helpful and I think it is a very beautiful way to learn photography because mm -hmm. I think we spoke about that earlier on when we when we kind of planned this session here today and you told me about yeah. your students and you said as you mentioned the advantage of learning of how to hold you back on releasing the shutter and this is exactly what it's all about a film camera only gives you the opportunity to shoot a certain number of frames on one film which is 
or maybe I'm wrong. Is it 24? <laughs> I think it yeah. depends. I think it depends yeah. on what film you're using, but I think it's around about 24 images mm -hmm. on one film. And um, obviously, it takes time to change a film, and it's a very expensive way to do when you need to buy but, a lot of develop also yeah also the for each each, each frames uh, each reels we have 36 uh, limited pictures so yeah. you can take this, up to 36 images yeah so. oh, 36 even so you see um and this is the big difference to uh, digital photography and mm -hmm. i feel that when you start shooting on a film camera in first place you slow down yourself you make sure that you really think of the situation that happens in front of you and you consider whether it's worth taking the shot or whether you maybe change the angle first and it will help you to look yeah. through the viewer finding the right perspective on what True. you really want to shoot at. Absolutely. Yeah. Even the main problem or main, I'm not going to say it uh, as a problem, like main challenges you face uh, for uh, like when you have film cameras is you can't see the output, right? For digital sensor or digital camera, by pressing the shutter, instantly we can see the output. So we can keep like capturing several images, right? So we don't think of that uh, like technical aspect of photography really. Yeah, that's the other thing. So with digital yeah. cameras, we all know, we, we take one click and then it's slightly underexposed. So what we do, we do pretty much the same thing. And then we check the back screen and see, oh, no, that looks better. Yes. We can't do that on film. And we are mm -hmm. even very limited on what you can do in the edits afterwards. So obviously, you Absolutely. can edit your, yeah. your, um, your film mm -hmm. images as well, but not as good as you can do it with digital ones. Therefore, even the exposure and the right use of aperture and the focus finding and these kind of things is really a crucial thing on film cameras um, that mm. you be should be absolutely sure with before you take your picture and this is why yes it's a very good training and it's a very beautiful way to uh, start your photography with um, it's the look it's the gradient and i think it's a very nice so uh, someone is asking uh, some question harshit so do you uh, miss uh, about the analog era what do you miss about the analog era I, I can't really answer that question, I'm afraid, uh, due to that I'm 20 years old, um, 20 years, 28 years old. There we go. Yeah. So we are pretty much the same age. And um, mm -hmm. w uh, you and I, we know what photo uh, analog photography is about. Absolutely. But absolutely. we have, I think you agree to that. You and I, we've never shot anything on film on a commission basis. So it's, mm -hmm. it's a hobby, it's something we like. And I even brought my camera with me that I sometimes use. It's an old Lovely. Leica from, from Then I can show this one also, I have this Pentex. Yeah, so <laughs> these are beautiful cameras and yeah. we would never take them on assignments. It's for us, mm -hmm. it's like personal work we can shoot with it. So mm -hmm. this is why we I don't really miss anything about it. I think digital cameras gives us a great advantage when it comes to job and to 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 photojournalism and advertising yes. photography. Um, but I know some other photographers who certainly miss something, and it is, mm -hmm. um, I think, the competition the quality on quality and the depth also. I think. Uh, also, yeah, and it's the it's the the competition that is on the market. Everybody is a photographer mm -hmm. today. Everybody feels Absolutely. that he can he can make the job just because mm -hmm. he has the latest phone mm -hmm. or the latest digital camera. Uh, back in the analog area, I think it was different. Either you were a professional photographer, or you mm -hmm. weren't, but you still liked photography. But the jobs were given to the professional ones. Nowadays, mm -hmm. you have a camera, you try to convince your potential client, and then you do the shot. I think this is the big difference. And this is why yeah. I think some others somehow miss analog photography to a sense. Mm -hmm. So uh, there are some uh, questions coming up. Uh, so, so this is one. So can you read it? Yeah. Uh, climate condition at the same time, click a main picture what what does this uh, boy or mean, girl right? mean by by climate condition i'm not in india um i'm i'm not suffering from any muslim rain at the moment um <laughs> what i like i'm very good with temperatures and uh yeah um this is how i do it so which camera are you using right now 
Um, I'm a Canon person now. I changed, okay. I swapped from Nikon to Canon, and the camera that mm -hmm. I use the most is the Canon uh, 5D Mark IV. Okay, yep. so that is a full yeah. frame camera and is this a is, very, very good model. Yeah, this is a very good model. I think it's the latest on the market at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, I've got two bodies of that, okay. and um, I have a very good lens here as well. It's the 2470, one of my main lenses mm -hmm. as well. It's um, 2.8. 2.8, yeah. Yeah, so super sharp mm -hmm. camera uh, lens, I mean. And the camera is, um, yeah, very fast. It's good resolution. Um, mm -hmm. it, is, it gives you like all the good features that you need in modern photography. And if someone asks you to do a video as well, you can easily swap and um, take some stunning stuff like that on this camera too yeah mm -hmm. so so uh, by using this kind of uh, dslr cameras uh, suppose this is very useful for uh, for a cinematographer or obviously very useful for a photographer also right so you can swipe in between so you can take some really good videos as well as you can capture some uh, photographs also right um photography wise 100% this is the reason yeah. I chose this camera <laughs> mm -hmm. because it's fast. Um, it's very good in um, low light situations. Mm -hmm. It's a very handy model um, and the resolution is quite good. Um, this is why I even prefer it to um, other and even more expensive models. Uh, when it comes to video, I have to step, a step backwards due to that I'm a still photographer. I know how to do videos, but I think mm -hmm. you're a way better expert than that. Um, but I do know quite a few people who take this camera as a video camera as well. And I yes. think they, they create very good work, but um, I don't mm -hmm. have any, any opinion on that really, because this is not the field of my expertise. Okay, so uh, we'll be coming, uh, coming up with the technical questions uh, later on. So first, uh, uh, I'm very excited to know about uh, your uh, experience in the Germany, like after taking photography as a passion. So how did you develop that passion into profession? How did I develop the passion into a uh, profession? That's a really nice yeah. sentence though. I love it. <laughs> Whew. Um, I've, I think I've never actually thought of becoming a photographer, a full-time photographer in first place. Mm -hmm. um, you mentioned that I develop most of my professional skills in, in Germany, and this is true though, but I have to mention that beforehand I did my education in England, in Cambridge, and um, I studied photography as one of my subjects there too. This is okay. already, and this is was really because I always had somehow a passion into photography, yeah. but it was one of my teachers um, who, recommended me to go deeper into the field of photography because she said mm -hmm. felix honestly when you speak about geography that was the other subject that i was keen on studying she said felix but when you speak about photography i see your eyes shining and yes. i will never ever forget this sentence and this made me considering a professional career in photography so at that time i moved back to germany where i'm from i'm german mm -hmm. to mention that mm -hmm. i moved back to germany and uh, i started an apprenticeship okay. so an apprenticeship is something that it's a very german system i don't know whether this exists in india as well but it combines work and studies so i was hired by a company but i was mm -hmm. at the same time i was at a university so all the theoretical stuff that i've learned I, I was taught in school and the practical part of it in company. So I was already related in this, in this field and this work and environment. And that's obviously helped me a lot. So like I said, I've never actually thought of becoming a photographer. Someone needed to help me to find out this is the right thing for me. And then it was very professional working conditions a professional field of being surrounded by clients and good equipment and um, yeah people who were as passionate as I was and this is how I was keen on learning and reading and watching YouTube <laughs> tutorials and trying to get as much as 
photography in to develop my own style somehow. So, uh, so this is uh, this kind of experience is very much important, right? Like for budding photographers also, they should start uh, like experiment with uh, dif different genres of photography, and they should start watching YouTube videos, and they should uh, like develop their uh, technical knowledge about photography first, right? Hundred percent. So I think it's important um, to learn a lot of the technical aspects. Um, mm -hmm. To be honest with you, I feel there are very there are a lot of photographers out there who mm -hmm. don't have a clue of how photography actually works. They have Absolutely. no idea about the exposure of triangle, for instance. Yeah. So I think you all know what we're talking about, the yeah. combination of aperture, shutter mm -hmm. speed, and ISO. Um, so in digital area, we are some sort of capable to do a lot of adjustments. We can easily, ex like, digitally, digitally, so we can expose the picture in, in, yeah. in our adjustments for, like, one mm -hmm. stop or so. But this will not help us to remain on the good quality that our camera gives. It's faking. So yeah. this is why there are many photographers out there who know how to take pictures. They mm -hmm. maybe have a good perspective on things, but they don't mm -hmm. know how to use the technical aspects to it. And mm -hmm. this is why it's very important to learn about these things, to read some books, also to maybe go to courses, maybe have the great opportunity to be taught by someone like you in schools or um, in, in universities, listen to your tutors. Yeah. What I'm not a big fan of is private courses given by someone who thinks that he knows or she knows what photography is about and is just mm -hmm. trying to get a group out of 10 people together and everybody is standing next to each other and they all take the picture of the same thing and you try to explain why you're using this angle and why you need to try yeah. I'm not a big fan of that. So, so it, that is very basic, right? That's very basic. It's yeah. very important, but it's very important to listen to mm -hmm. a professional tutor, to do some reading, open a book, just note down what's apertures, what is the ISO, and if you have an understanding of that, then you go mm -hmm. out and then you shoot, and you, it's all about how keen you are on developing your art style and um, getting the pictures in and failures as well. It's so important yeah. to fail as well. Mm -hmm get pictures overexposed, get pictures underexposed, and then we are mm -hmm. back in. Film is good, good learning. <laughs> because this hurts the most when you, when you lose some pictures. <laughs> true, true. So in this uh, context, uh, someone uh, asked that, uh, did you have a mentor for photography or? Um, certainly my teachers and certainly the people that i work with um mm -hmm. like i said i did my my apprenticeship and i was surrounded mm -hmm. by professional photographers and i worked as an assistant mainly especially in the mm -hmm. very beginning and even when i was a full photographer and even nowadays i'm still very happy to assist other photographers just to see how they work and it's good to to keep this community alive because everybody needs some help and everybody has his uh, specialization into some fields of photographer, uh, photography. Sorry, and it is it is good to speak to people openly mm -hmm. about many things. So I think that I have had quite a few mentors, but not one person in per se. And uh, Arjuita is asking, who is your favorite photographer? <laughs> it's really very difficult to answer. Like, it is a very difficult question. I know. Uh, there are but, like so many good pro photographers out <laughs> there. And I honestly, I would say someone from the older generation rather than someone mm -hmm. from, from nowadays. I think it's mainly photographers um, that you find in these old books. Mm -hmm. um, and one photographer I really like is Carlo Bolenghi. Um, okay. And we will come to this topic later on. He is a mm -hmm. sailor, sailing and yachting photographer. Yeah, himself. obviously. And you are very um, much passionate about sailing. And yeah. We'll <laughs> we'll be talking we'll about, that. Yeah. about that later <laughs> on. And this is the reason why, yeah, um, I feel that he is one of my favorite photographers because 
I know him personally. I've I've mm -hmm. had worked with him oh. a couple of times side by side. Um, and what I like about him is that, yeah, he's a very friendly person. And all the photographers that I like the most are the ones who are happy to share their skills and speak mm -hmm. honestly about photography with the same passion like I do or you do. Um, yeah. Because what we want, all we want is to keep passion photography is, alive. Passion is very much alive, important. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We want to keep it alive. Everything you can do, so many things with editing yeah. and photo uh, with computers today, but photography is so important. So this is why, mm -hmm. where I would like to pick my favorite photographers from. So, uh, who inspired you in photography? So Talentista is one of our uh, promotion partners. So they want to know Hello. who inspired you in photography. So this is uh, very much, it's a very similar question, isn't it? Um, who inspired me? So obviously, Carlo Bolenghi again. Or... Uh, my grandfather. Yeah, yeah. Some, some photographers. Um, mm -hmm. My grandfather. And mm -hmm. um, I, I, I don't just see it. I can, no, no, no way. I'm, I'm just too, too wide. There's some uh, books behind me from Magnum. Um, okay. And mm -hmm. uh, I remember when I was a kid, I've never was so keen on reading. Reading mm. is very important though, but yeah. images was always important. And I somehow was very interested in the photography. It was not about the mm. photography, mainly it was about the images. So I think this is mm. where I took a lot of inspiration from. Great. And uh, I have seen one more in, in interested question, which is uh, this one. So, Can you see the question? Yeah. The living you make in UK where children. Uh, yeah, um, London is, I think everybody will understand that, usually a very busy place. Mm -hmm. We all know that <laughs> the, the circumstances at the moment are slightly different, but that's something else we're going to talk about later on. Um, it's a very busy city, so a lot of things happen. And I don't know whether you follow the news in Europe, um, but you probably have heard of the Brexit. I am German. I'm part of the European Union. Mm -hmm. England is not anymore. So there has been a lot of political discussions in the past. And this was one of the main reasons why, our, why, uh, why I decided to remain living in the UK after my studies because I thought this is a very photogenic um, and photojournalistic topic. Absolutely, so yeah. living in London as a photojournalist is worth trying. It's not the easiest city due to that there are many good photojournalists out there. Photography mm -hmm. has a very strong meaning in the UK and in England in particular. Um, but there's quite a few jobs. There's a lot of stories. There, it's, a, it's known as a melting pot from, which brings together a lot of nationalities, mm -hmm. a lot of Asian populations, European populations, Americans, Australians. Um, you hear a lot of different languages. So there's a lot of stories available, a lot of socializing, a lot of um, food, a lot of um, yeah, and terrorism as well. So we we had been attacked by by some ISIS, for instance. So there were terror attacks. So living mm -hmm. as a photojournalist in London, there are stories, and it's a place where you can live and you will get your stories without a lot of traveling, even. So uh, do you know Viva? Uh, Viva uh, is. Uh, I remember him. I hope he's well. <laughs> huh? <laughs> it's quite yeah. quite a bit time that we haven't spoken. Unfortunately, we should mm -hmm. be doing that quite so, soon again. So now we'll be coming uh, towards the uh, like your Indian experience, especially the experience related with Kolkata. So that's how we met, right? So this is during how we met. 2014 and 2015. Is that yeah. that long time ago? Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> so could you please uh, share some of your experience, like photographing different portraits or different aspects in the city of joy? So could you please uh, elaborate? City of joy. That's yeah. the way you can't be put it any better. And I'm, I'm pretty sure that this is a phrase that you're very familiar with. For me, it's something new, mm -hmm. but it exactly describes how, how I felt. It was an amazing time. This is how we met. This is how I met some other yes. students. 
Um, and this is um, where I made my decision on whether I want to become a full-time advertising photographer or rather photojournalist. So there's mm -hmm. quite a few memories uh, from that time. Um, I remember the city as very loud, a lot of beautiful colors, mm -hmm. um, a lot of people running around and at first play at first i was a bit lost and i was happy that i had some <laughs> students around who guided me through the streets i would have gotten completely lost i remember once i had to take one of these yellow cabs and i didn't have any gps on me and i just mentioned the street and it took me like almost two hours to get to a street that was maybe a food passing uh, passage away <laughs> so um uh, yeah, we were we worked together. We worked on on uh, two different stories. One was my mm -hmm. personal story. Uh, it was more about portraitures and getting to know the city a little bit better. And this is why I have quite a few images in my head still that remind me of that time. And then there was one project that was hosted by university, where I collaborated on with uh, some other students. Uh, it was about radios and the introduction uh, to radios in the slums areas to mm -hmm. support uh, communications and the access to news better. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, and one more thing, I'm very curious, like, why did you choose uh, India? So there are lots of countries. So how did it happen? Oh, it's a very, very, very good question. Why did I choose India and why did I choose Kolkata? Um, I yeah. think it was more about Kolkata than it was India, to be fair. Mm. Sorry for everyone yeah. who doesn't live in Kolkata. There's certainly the chance for me to visit all the other places. But Kolkata was so far the only place I've been to. And that was for two reasons. And mm. I would like to start with the, the main reason first. Um, I mentioned earlier that I took my education in Cambridge. It was for my A-levels, so I was there in college. Mm -hmm. I had a teacher, and she was my personal tutor. She was someone I really appreciated, I liked a lot, and I met as a friend even. Her name was Shipriya. And okay. Shipriya, I hope that I pronounced her name correctly, um, but probably you are familiar with that name. Are you from uh, Yeah, yeah, Shupriya. Oh, Shupriya. Yes, absolutely. Shupriya. Cool. So um, we're still in touch. We speak a lot. Mm -hmm. And um, she helped me with some study issues, apparently. And she was some sort of fan of my photography, let's say. She asked me for a print when I was in my first year at that school. And it's still with her. That's really nice. I, she showed me the other day. She's from Kolkata, and okay. she always wanted me to go. She said, this mm -hmm. is the place where colors are the most beautiful ones, something you can't even imagine unless you go there. And I promised her. So she promised me to help me in school. I promised her to go to Kolkata, <laughs> and we promised each other <laughs> to, to remain yeah. and stay friends forever, and this is still the case. So she said, Felix, you need to go. And I went. And when I had the opportunity to go to Kolkata, she was the first person I rang and said, the time is now, and now I'm going. That was two years after my graduation. Um, and how did I get to Kolkata for the second reason? That was a private contact to someone who lives in my mother's place neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And uh, he is a friend of... I don't know whether I can mention the name here of um, the head of Eilid College. Yeah, Mr. Chopra. Yeah. Mr. Chopra, cool. Um, so Mr. Chopra and he are friends. Mr. Chopra actually been to my hometown a couple of times. Mm -hmm. So that is how they came together and met each other. And uh, when I was keen on doing something rather interesting, uh, the opportunity came up and I got invited to come to India. So... I booked a flight, I flew to Kolkata, I was even allowed and invited to stay at his as a um, yeah, ex exchange student. 
And I met those amazing people and I stood there for just over a month and it was an amazing mm -hmm. time and it was the point of where I decided of who I would like to become as a photographer and the decision was made back then and I'm still on the same route. Okay. So, uh, so I think we can uh, see some of your clicks that you have clicked here in Kolkata. So let me share the screen and yeah. I think you can see. So could you please uh, explain like uh, your experience and the uh, thought behind this particular photograph? Yeah, this is um, actually one of the last pictures that I took um, and it has a very strong meaning to me in terms of, you see this man in the very background, right? With the mm -hmm. yellow, yes. yellow black shirt. Maybe you can point this on one. it with, with yeah. yeah. and. Mm -hmm. This is a German shirt. It's from the German post. Oh, really? I don't know how it got there, but it must be mm -hmm. through some other hands and it must be given to them somehow, but it's definitely from the German post. And I saw it and I said, this is funny. I'm kilometers <laughs> away from where I'm from. And I came yeah. in this little factory and I saw it. And I felt, okay, this is certainly worth a shot. So it's maybe not the strongest photograph. I'm a big mm -hmm. fan of showing environments. Even mm -hmm. when I take my, my portraits, I like to show a little bit of the background um, to give a bit of contents of where the picture was taken. But that was really a shot of showing my friends and saying, look, the German post is everywhere. <laughs> yeah. But I still like it. It's a lot of colors in it, huh? It's uh, it's and it shows me that I had access to something for some people maybe normal, but for me something unusual because factories, um, especially in Europe, you hardly have any access to it. That's that's mm -hmm. completely covered by security and stuff. And and the the uh, actual location is very vivid, and also you can see different kinds of elements also, right? Like. The color combination, the uh, if you're talking about the elements that uh, the overall place they have used different kinds of elements, it's very yeah. vibrant and like, messy. It, yeah, it, yeah, it's very messy, definitely. And this is how mm -hmm. you structure your documentaries, don't you? I think um, when yes. you speak about documentaries, you need one wide angle shot at least. You need one portrait, and mm -hmm. um, you need something in between. And this is pretty wide angle because obviously there's walls on the right hand on the left hand side so there's not more sh to show but i think by looking at it you mm -hmm. you see what it's all about and then there's this little extra <laughs> that uh, gives a bit of um, personal relation uh, to to my country mm -hmm. <laughs> So this is how you can document any place, right? So you have to have a like wide angle aspect, so yeah. which, which will like show the essence and beauty of that particular location. So I think I used the 35 millimeter lens for that. So a prime okay. lens, 35, mm -hmm. um, which is a very well known documentary lens. And um, because it's, it's, it's not too wide angled, it doesn't get too exposed. You still have your 90 degrees angled in the background. You show a lot and you can put your focus very well on, on and where you that, like to that have That 35 mm is very sharp as well. And it will give you very less distortion, right? Compared yeah. to wide angle lenses. Sharpness, sharpness is one yeah. of my key points. I'm, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm maybe sometimes too exact about it. I, when it comes okay. to my picture selection, when something is out of focus, Mm -hmm. It's very unlikely that I'm going to choose it into my final selects. I'm maybe I don't know how, but focus is so important, so so important. Always put your focus right. <laughs> so uh, you are using 35 mm. So you have used that particular lens, and the aperture was 1.4 or? Oh, I don't what? remember. That's that's but really. Your hard. your lens uh, lens is. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it. This is um, my my favorite is the Sigma. Um, okay. So I, I use a Sigma. My 35 mil is a Sigma lens. It's it's amazing okay. lens. It's super light mm -hmm. and it's amazing, beautiful lens, yeah. and not too pricey. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, compared to the Nikon on Can Canon brand lenses. 
I use I use Canon lenses only apart from this one Sigma, and okay. it's one of my favorite lenses when it comes to documentary. It's so light. It's so light, and it looks yeah. beautiful. And and the sharpness also, it's crystal clear. It, crystal, it's really crystal clear. very good. Yeah. Unbelievable. So, so let's go to the next image. So I'm I'm like I'm very uh, fond of this particular framing. Like, uh, could you please explain something about this image? Like. Hundred percent. I think we're going to see <laughs> some of these sort of images later on as well. Um, mm -hmm. um, I'm not often in front of the camera, apparently, okay. because I'm the photographer. But mm -hmm. I sometimes try to hide a few bits of mine into the pictures, and this is exactly what happened here. This is my own mm -hmm. hand, and okay. uh, I, I was uh, slandering through uh, one of these areas there, and I saw this little boy. And he and I, we had eye contact, and we all know like what he's doing there. I think we don't need to mention that again. But he was playing with me, so I was as well. And um, there was no boundary between him and I. Um, but he was, all of a sudden, when I took this picture, he put his hand in front of his eye, so I did the same. <laughs> hmm. You know, this is why, why we like photography, because photography gives you so many opportunities. And if you've got time, you know, there was no pressure. Mm -hmm. There was no client behind me. There was no one who said, Absolutely. Hey, you have a free, free mind. mind. Yeah. Yeah. I was, I was there. I had time. I enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. So I played with people who were in my surrounding. So I did with this little boy. So, yeah, mm -hmm. I can do the same here, right? Yeah, even I also do that. <laughs> It's it's really really cool composition. It's very interesting, and the way the that particular boy is interacting uh, through your lens is that is what it makes that particular photograph very vivid and lively. Yeah. So it's really but again, nice. We spoke about uh, focus finding mm -hmm. already, um, but especially when you take these pictures, uh, some sort of these pictures with a face in. It's so mm -hmm. crucial that you put the focus right and that you point it on the person that you like to photograph. I think it wouldn't be the same picture when the focus was somewhere in the background and yeah. the kid is uh, not in focus, neither my hands are. Uh, so I wanted this depth of field, apparently. It's fair enough that my hands are not in focus, but the, the, the focus has to be on the face. And this is so crucial with all portraits that you put focus right. I just repeat myself on that, but it's so important. True, absolutely true. Thank you very so, much for the nice comments coming through. <laughs> really appreciate so, that. So let's go to the next one. Yeah, oh my God, fill the frame. Fill yeah. the frame, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but before we go closer and more into compositions, mm -hmm. um, I think this picture really represents of how I work. I don't, you know, I don't know those kids. I don't know who they yeah. are. But I was so close. And mm -hmm. we're speaking about a 35 mil lens. Yeah. It's wide angle. 50 is mm -hmm. like normal. A 35 is already wide angle. So mm -hmm. you have to understand that I was so close that you, and maybe focus on the eye for a split of a second, that you see myself in the picture within the eye can yeah absolutely let me zoom in yeah I yeah can, can you try to zoom in yeah so this is yeah, me so this is this is what photography so, yeah. is also about don't be afraid mm -hmm. of your your opposite it doesn't matter whether it's a wedding or mm -hmm. someone you meet on the street of course there's some boundary you cannot go too close because otherwise you will afraid them but with kids especially they love you you know, mm -hmm. so you love them. Mm -hmm. So come close and, and play and, with them. And the most interesting part is they are very welcoming, right? Absolutely. And it, it, it's a lucky shot, let's be honest, because mm -hmm. um, to get this one frame perfectly, you need to take more than one picture. I think getting the same mm -hmm. picture on a film camera would be a bit difficult. And I, I tell yeah. you, there were quite a few on, out of focus. And there was really mm -hmm. me like coming close and clack, 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 clack. And yeah. I still, I spoke to them, you know, I used words, even though they didn't see my mouth because it was covered by the camera. So when I work like that, you don't see my, you don't see my, um, my mouth, but I still mm -hmm. speak to them and they see my eyes somehow. So I'm trying to like doing something like that so that there's yeah. communication happening. And this is so important. And if you do that right, you must 
um, you can come closer and closer and closer. And this is how this framing works. And got really, really nice. There. Yeah. So uh, in this context, I just want to add one thing, like uh, how difficult it is to communicate with them. Suppose there is a, obviously there is a, a language barrier, right? So whenever you are in this city, which is the city of joy, which is Kolkata, mm. and uh, if you see the streets and every slums areas is totally crowded. So how difficult and challenging uh, it was for you shooting in, especially in Kolkata and the streets of Kolkata. I can't remember of any difficulties I had there, especially with children. You know, yeah. have you ever tried to speak to a baby? I mm -hmm. know these are not babies, but you know how yeah. to communicate with a baby. You know, you've got mouth, you've got a smile, you've got hands and they obviously, obviously recognize that I've got a camera in my hand. And mm -hmm. I didn't tell them what to do. Yeah. Let let them so do what they want. Yeah. And even Absolutely. if you if you photograph a wedding, you know, mm -hmm. I, I I'm not a big fan of speaking to my models like, oh, do this, do that. Yeah. Let them be authentic. Let them be real. And this is exactly what happened there. And yes, they don't speak my language. Mm -hmm. My language is German. They don't speak English. They speak their language. But yeah. we have something in common, and this is humanity. We are all people, and we even like some words might sound similar. And if you say, Look to me, and you do like, like this, yeah, everybody yeah. understands that. So, communication is important 100%. But uh, don't worry about communication. Imagine you, yeah. you, you, you know, everybody is more than welcome to visit me wherever I am and be with me and you will go into a shop and there's an elderly person who is 90 years old mm -hmm. who's not capable to speak English because this person has never been taught English in school. But you can still be friendly and you can still ask yeah. for help when you need help. And this is the same with any sort of communication happening. So I didn't have any issues with that at all. But this is maybe me because I'm a very open minded and smiling people anyway, a person anyway. <laughs> so I think uh, this quality is very important for any kind of photographers, right? Be it wedding photographers, be it street photographers or any kind of uh, sort of commercial photography. This kind of friendly nature is uh, uh, like uh, very important, right? Yeah, yeah, hundred mm -hmm. percent, absolutely agree. So to that. Uh, let's go to the yeah. So let's go to the uh, next one. So this is really direct to the camera. So your subject is uh, directly communicating through your lens. So please uh, tell your experience about this. Thing. Very direct, and. Mm -hmm. I, to be honest with you, I feel a bit sorry about taking these pictures. Okay. So when I reflect back to when that was taken, mm -hmm. I changed since. And I think this is something I learned through my studies um, that we're going to talk about uh, later on as well. And this is ethic. so ethics, this yes. is ethics. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I don't know these people, and we spoke about communication. And this is not a kid anymore. It's a it's it's an adult. It's a mother mm -hmm. of a kid. And obviously, I asked if I can enter. You know, I had my camera in my hands, and I said, "Can I go in there? Can I take a picture?" I even had some translators. Okay. And they said yes. They let me go in. Mm -hmm. But is that right to enter a house where you're not feeling so unsure with? But this is the question that I can only, this is a very big question we all photographers have to answer ourselves in the very moment of when we take the picture. Is it worth going in there? Is it worth coming so close in an environment that you may be not proud at because you, mm -hmm. this is your home, but you know you're not living in the very best environment? Is it worth showing it? But maybe it is. Um, so I still like this picture. It is very important that this picture was taken. It taught me a lot, but I maybe have had done it a little bit different, um, maybe with a little bit more preparation and for beforehand, with a little bit more communication to, to make things clear. Um, 
and maybe the outcome would have been the same but i remember when i took these pictures i was very keen on getting the shot and i run in there and said hey hello smile smile can i take yeah. it Um, but the uh, yeah. girl was a little bit scared also right? definitely definitely yeah. but it's it's still a good i think it's still a very good image and um, yeah. the communication that this mm -hmm. picture delivers is documentary and documentary is important we need to show Absolutely. the world of yeah. how other people in other countries live compared mm -hmm. to where we're from i'm from a very western country So people look at it and they're even shocked. I'm not shocked because I remember all those people as very happy and helpful and hopeful. Mm -hmm. um, nevertheless, maybe I could have done things slightly different, but I'm still glad that I've got this shot and I had the access to see it. And this is a shot from my memory. Mm -hmm. So with this shot, you have understood that there is something called ethics. So this is also very important that uh, we need to understand the ethics of photography. Like uh, we can't go, like we can't enter some into someone's uh, like privacy zone. So we also have to give respect to them. So this is also very important, right? So with this image, you have understood the ethical, uh, ethical use of photography. So that's how we learn, right? Yeah, so, 100%. So I always, just to make that clear, uh, mm -hmm. to avoid any misunderstanding, I always, I had always showed respect to yeah. everyone that has been shown in this picture. And it was not that anyone pushed me away. I was mm -hmm. coming close. I used my hands. I had other students from iLead with me. They were able to translate the best they could. Mm -hmm. And I was, someone else from their family took my hand and guided me in okay but it was okay. not her it was someone else mm -hmm. it was maybe her husband or so mm -hmm. so i just wanted to make clear so i showed respect to everyone but mm -hmm. thinking backwards i i would have things done slightly different and this is what i learned and i think everybody has to learn. yeah mm -hmm. so this is the next one Mm -hmm. So I can see very interesting uh, expression here. So, and also I can see two different generation, right? So could you please elaborate uh, on that? Yeah. It's, it's, I think it's maybe one of my favorite shots. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, um, maybe you can tell me more about this picture than I can do myself because it, I, I, I did some research on the makeup and um, I somehow know what it was for. But for me as a stranger, I was something completely new. And uh, it seems that these two are twins. Mm -hmm. And I think it's their grandmother in the background. Grandmother, yeah. Um, and it was the colors. It was the makeup. And mm -hmm. again, it was communication between the two kids, me, even though they were so different, a uh, different habit than the other kids did previously that we showed earlier where, where they were like playing with me. But, you know, I was there, they looked into my camera, I took the shot, and we had some fun afterwards. And the grandmother, she was, she was happy with it. And uh, this is, I think, because twins are always some sort of a, uh, I don't know, everything that is twins is kind of symmetrical, so it's composition. And yeah. composition is in this picture in many sense. It's the shadows in the background, it's the colors. Yeah. It is the twins with a straight line in the middle, but also it's that the twin on the left hand side, uh, so with the green jumper, or is it the right hand side? I don't know how you see it. So the one with the green, let's put it that way. And then the one in the pink, it's a bit of curved downwards towards the grandmother. So you have a full mm -hmm. understanding of who is involved and who's been shown. Yeah. And we can see uh, two different generations also. So by putting that uh, grandmother in that uh, right side of that particular frame. Yeah. So it's really nice, nice composition also. So next, easy next picture, this, is, this, is, this is really interesting, right? Like, please share your experience. Oh, it's, it's funny. What, what did we say? It was 2014, 2015, and it feels it was yesterday. 
Um, I saw this man taking a shower, and uh, because he was covered well, you know, he was not nude. Um, I think it's 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 fair to come closer, and I think the understanding of that I like to take a picture of him was clear. You know, he was not pressured, um, and I asked him to do his shower a couple of times with some water. And yeah. um, apparently, I wanted the train to come past. So mm -hmm. this is. I think it's not staging, is it? Because I came there, there was no train, and I mm -hmm. waited some minutes, maybe maybe ten minutes or so, until I heard the the horn. I knew that the train is coming past, and again, it's one of those shots of where I didn't take just one frame. I took quite a few um, mm -hmm. because I obviously wanted the people in the background looking towards me as well. I wanted to see some people looking out of the window. We all know that uh, the trains in Kolkata are usually very much packed, uh, something I experienced myself, and I wanted this to become part of the picture as well so that you have somehow an idea of where this picture was taken. Um, and taking the shower of a very muscular man is, of course, ethic. I have to be careful with that, but still very beautiful, cleaning. It's authentic but he was happy, he enjoyed it somehow, and then there's something in the background that you cannot plan. I couldn't plan that there's someone with a green, red dress on. I, I couldn't re I think of that, I frame it so well that there's like three men in the background with their jeans on, and the face of him is nicely framed within this door. You know what I mean? So obviously yeah. there's been a little bit of luck um, involved in this shot, um, but still ha I had the idea of how I like to get these pictures done in first place. And this is also very important that you see the image before it was taken. True. True. Even uh, if I want to talk about the composition also, I can see the leading lines uh, throughout the railway tracks. It's really nice. It's going narrower on the left hand side and the expression of the uh, passengers there uh, from the train and also the expression of this particular subject also. So it's, it's overall, it's like uh, really like giving you out of different kinds of moods and vibes, right? So yeah, and I think well image. thank you very much. And uh, also um, the thing is, I look at these pictures and because they were not taken yesterday, they were taken a few days, uh, for a few years ago, I feel that I can talk about it as it was not even my picture, but it is. Anyways, um, what I want to say is um, the shutter speed was wisely chosen as well because I wanted to freeze him as a person. I wanted the water in some movement, but it was also important that the train shows movement, what it does. But because it was not on full speed, apparently, you can still recognize and see faces in the background. So it's not completely burnt out. Yeah. Absolutely. So uh, with the use of composition rules, you have to keep in mind the technicalities also, like you want to use the fast shutter or slow shutter, wider aperture or like narrower aperture. So you have to calculate that and you have to put that into your frame. So it's, it's really difficult and challenging also, but by uh, by doing different kinds of assignments and by uh, developing your experience, so so it will come automatically, right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, very well said. Um, it's it's like sports, isn't it? Um, you you can you can, you know everybody knows how to to kick a football. Mm -hmm. um, I think we're going to see a picture later on where I'm trying to do some cricket. Um, yeah. I, I I've absolutely failed. Um, just to mention that already, and it's the same with photography. Um, you start. Everybody knows how to to release the shutter. Everybody knows how to, to get something into the shot. But mm -hmm. then by doing and trying things out, you get more confident in what you do and you have a bit of a plan. And this plan is so important that you start creating your own photography. Okay. And this is where, what you're aiming towards too. You want to create your own story. And mm -hmm. again, I used the same lens for all the shots yet and i think it's again the 35 mil lens and mm -hmm. it gives me this opportunity to do a portrait 
uh, with some information content in the background to it. Mm -hmm. And I, I had only the prime lens, so I can I can find the perspective. I don't need to zoom in to zoom out. Everything is steady, and I just need to find the right angle towards my object. And I take the pictures, and I knew what I want to do. And obviously, because it was digital again, I could have I was able to check my exposure beforehand. I knew that my exposure is right when the moment happens, and this is mm -hmm. what happened. Everything was set up. And then the train came and I knew, okay, now I want to have my shot. True. So it's really nice. Let's uh, move on to the next one. So this one, this one is really heart touching as well as I think uh, you want to portray so many things by this uh, particular photograph, right? So could you please explain? Don't you want to lay in the middle? I think it looks very comfortable. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I um yeah I think there's not much to say I someone again it's a slightly ethical issue to it because someone sleeps you know mm -hmm. I'm very honest and I'm very sorry in case this person is listening to us I took this picture of him and I didn't ask and he will probably never know but mm -hmm. again we do photo journalism and I don't harm him you know I'm, I'm I think this yeah. is a it's a fair image and you have a dog Dogs are our best friends. And you have someone sleeping yeah. in the sun with a nice shadow. Um, that picture was not easy, even though I'm nearly two meters, you know, in mm -hmm. height. I'm a very tall person. I'm trying to get this done, trying to, to frame it correctly. <laughs> yeah. and you see, like, 35 mil is slightly, yes, yes. slightly too, um, too close so that I had to uh, crop into um, those two objects however mm -hmm. i think this is very important cropping is a very nice thing to do it's not forbidden it's even gives something to the picture as mm -hmm. long as you do it wisely and with an idea and i think um, when you look at this picture you see the symmetry um, you see that the back of the dog is cut by the frame as well as somehow the similar amount is done on the other person lying opposite Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, this is uh, framing, and framing is important. And cropping into an object doesn't mean that you miss the shot. Quite the opposite, even it fills the frame, and this is what it happens here. And also, it invites you to add something into this picture um, through your mind and imagination of why well, don't want to. Well, maybe I want to lie down. You know, it, it communicates with you again. This picture. There's there's a place for you to lay down, offered to you, as well as to everybody who looks at it at the moment. Absolutely. So it's really nicely taken, and I can by observing this particular photograph, I can feel the like relation between the human and the dogs. It's like a, it's really quite beautiful, right? The way the log uh, lies here. And the ways the same way the that particular person is uh, lying here, so it's it's, it's a peaceful. portraying the relation, yeah. Very relation peaceful, yeah? both of them, yeah. So it's really nice. So let's move on to the next one, and this is very famous area in Kolkata. <laughs> this is uh, <laughs> flower market. So now, so how was your experience uh, after entering into this crowded zone? So it it was I, I, really crowded. It is super crowded, and I think I went there yeah. like three times at least. And mm -hmm. uh, you probably all know where that was taken from. That was taken from this bridge nearby. Mm -hmm. uh, social distancing, I'm just reading out. Yeah, don't you don't you feel the same when you look at these pictures? You feel like, wait, how is that even possible? Isn't it painful? You feel like, oh, I can't do that anymore. Hopefully it's gonna come back to that at some point. Anyway, sorry mm -hmm. for that. Um, yeah, how did I feel about it? I don't know. I was amazed. What a beautiful colors this is. And this is probably a very touristic picture for you, as you know this place so well. And you know that people coming by, they all take the same picture. But for me, it was something special. And I think this is also important about photography. It doesn't really matter what other people feel and think. It's about how you feel about something. And I'm not a very, I'm not a travel photographer. I don't even take my camera with me when I travel. But this is one shot that I took and I remember it. And I can tell for Europeans, it's one of the best and favorite pictures out of my series. This is the best, uh, my bestseller. 
So mm. I saw these pictures. I can, I probably know like six or seven living rooms oh, of wow. where this is printed and is hanging because you know it's not it's not one person. It's mm. not irritating. It is all about beauty and colors and the meaning of it. Um, and this is why this picture is part of the selection as well. It's just, as, for me, it's a beautiful image without any deeper meaning. Mm -hmm. Just a and good memory. True. So that is why our India is really incredible, right? Be it the vibrance, be it the crowd, be it the like, uh, actual communication way. So India is really vibrant in this particular sense. And I think... You also, uh, I think you you will also uh, like uh, give similar point of view that uh, this is really India or any kind of cities here in India. So this is really a haven for street photographers. You will find so many things, right? Hundred percent. So mm -hmm. street photography. I think we all know some photographers um, who did amazing books on India, um, and this is for a reason. It's because of the colors. It's about what happens there. It's about the happiness from people towards the camera. So when I was there, I felt it didn't really matter of who I like to take a picture for, uh, of. Everybody was somehow interested in what you do and where you're from. But this is maybe because obviously I'm not Indian. I'm, I'm yeah. German. Um, but everybody was so friendly. And, and they're very much welcoming. Yeah, and they're very much welcoming. And this mm -hmm. helps you as a photographer to try things out because mm -hmm. I really struggle to do street photography in the, uh, in, in, in the country where I'm from. I'm very mm -hmm. honest with you because mm -hmm. people look at you and they stare at you and they don't want to take, have any pictures taken of them. They ask you where it goes um, and they're not open to it. But the funny thing is, everybody's running around with a phone, like doing selfies, putting it online, yeah. Instagram, and so on. But when you, as a professional photographer, would like to take some pictures of them, because you feel this moment is worth capturing, mm -hmm. then they don't like it. And this was the opposite that I experienced in India. And I hope it is still the same, and it hasn't changed then yet. And I hope it will never yeah, change. It's the same, yeah. Because it's and the barrier. To be changed soon, but they are still very much welcoming. We do yeah. street photographies with some of my students. So, but there are some ethics. So that you need obviously you need to follow while of capturing. Course, of course, very important. Uh, so it's very important as well. So uh, let's see your uh, behind the scene. Wow. Oh God, this is this is the cricket thing that I mentioned. Okay. <laughs> So it's really nice. So, so that is the quality of uh, of a street photographer. Like you have to be very friendly with your subject so that you can get the desired uh, photograph, right? So this is really important. Yeah, oh, but this is, this is this is also <laughs> yeah. There was you know there's like two or three, maybe five videos even, and we had to redo it like so many times until I was able to hit the ball at least once. And uh, of course, that was that was nice, and I really, really enjoyed it. Um, even though I, I was so bad in it, <laughs> but you have to understand, cricket is not it's it's not sports of ours. You know, yeah, we have other sports that we do on a on a national basis, and cricket is it was the ever first ever time I tried it, and um, but it's about interacting with other people that you know don't know, you know, and I think this is important. Everybody has something to show, and if it's cricket, then it's cricket. And I can maybe show something else instead. It's so communication again. I didn't speak their language, but this is how we communicated, and this is how I I built trust and faith. Mm -hmm. Great. So, uh, which sport do you like? <laughs> Sailing. <laughs> oh my god! Yes, yes. yes. On that. So you are done with your uh, Kolkata experience and the experience of India. So now we'll be moving towards the uh, next journey of your life, right? Which is uh, LLC, right? The London LC College of Communication. LCC, yeah. Yeah, LCC. London, so you please uh, tell us a bit more about your uh, uh, experience in the London School of Communication, uh, College of Communication. And also, I am very curious to know that uh, how your uh, photography career has helped uh, after 
uh, getting your master degrees from that particular uh, college? So I hope you don't mind if I start the story a little bit oh, yes, before absolutely. before I actually started my course at London College of Communication. I think this is um, important to say. Um, so we, we discussed that before. And um, so I was in advertising. I was engaged with advertising photography. And I worked for a studio in my hometown, Bremen, Germany. Um, I did this course. I did my apprenticeship. This is how I gained my first experience within the field of professional photography. Um, and then, like I said, at that point, I had the chance to go to Calcutta. I mm -hmm. made the decision on uh, whether I like to be advertising photography or uh, photojournalist instead. The decision was made. It was a quite easy exp um, experience, a uh, decision to make saying, I would like to do real stuff. I want to go out there. I want to experience the world. I want to meet people. I don't want to photograph people who are faked. I want to photograph people who are real. And so I. So after yes, India, before, uh, before your admission in LLC, right? Yeah, that's all before. This is all before. Yeah. And then I, the, after India, obviously, I came back to. Bremen. I worked there for another two years, um, but I still had this feeling: okay, I need to change something. And this change came with some assignments and some some project that are that were very much journalistic related. So I, I had some some assignments with the police. Um, I took pictures of uh, yeah in hospitals. I took some some photographs for some magazines and newspapers. And everything by the side that had nothing to do with my actual job, but I built up a portfolio and I yeah. was very keen on going one step beyond where I was back then. I found, I did some research on the internet and I found a course uh, based in South Africa, actually, in, um, in Johannesburg. Mm -hmm. Is that how you pronounce it? Johannesburg. Yes, Johannesburg. Um, yeah. It was a master's course for photojournalism okay. and my deadline was in this year so i think it was 2016 in september so and i wanted to get everything sorted i wanted to get i wanted to have my portfolio ready i wanted to have my personal letter ready i had mm -hmm. wanted to have my statements ready everything nice and clearly by preparing everything i saw in um, a link on the internet that the deadline for my application for London College of Communication ended in May. That was exactly oh. one half a year before the South African one. To be honest with you, I never expected that I have the chance to go to London, study there, because LCC is a very well-known college for mm -hmm. photography and for photojournalism in particular. So I didn't see a hint of a chance to get in there. But because the deadline was a half a year before South Africa, I wanted to see of if everything is prepared. Because what they asked for, the request, were exactly the same. They wanted to have a portfolio. They wanted to have um, a personal letter and so on. So I um, submitted my application to London College of Communication just for fun, to have everything ready and to, to set this up as my personal deadline. Mm -hmm. Three weeks later, I received an offer <laughs> and oh, okay. another one month later I moved to London. That was September and I started my course and um, yeah, I started my master's in photojournalism and photo documentary. Sorry to make the story so wide, but I think this is a bit of an no, interesting no, it's, fact. Really, it's a bit yeah. funny because it was pure luck um, mm -hmm. and sometimes you, you have to pray and things turn out uh, nicely and this is exactly what happened. So, um, yeah. Huh. Yeah. So That's let me let me come to your questions. Um, so being in London was of course very exciting, and this course as well because I remember when I met my my students that I'm going to spend the next fifteen months with during that time, and I was amazed of what an amazing photography they do. Most of them have already or had already been into photojournalism for quite a long time. 
they had their assignments, they were very good photographers. And it was me who had mainly uh, experience in advertising photography. But at that point, I realized that I com can combine both. So my photo journalism and my look that I learned from advertising photography, which is a little bit more editing, a little bit more, I know the basic of retouching, and I was able to combine both. What this course really helped me with the most it's not very much the photography aspect of it and not the technical part of it, but exactly what we mentioned before. And it was about ethics and about the understanding of photography and the history of photography. And that I think very, I'm very the storytelling aspects of photography also, right? The visual communication. Yeah, but we, the thing is, it was a master's course. It was okay. not a bachelor course. I think like when, when someone takes a bachelor course, then you go more into these very basic ideas of what photography is about. This was one step beyond that. It was more about the understanding and the photojournalistic aspect of it. What and photojournalism it takes, yeah. is about, how do you get out there? It was about questions regarding, let's say you're in a war zone mm -hmm. and your colleague is shot. Oh, okay. Do you help him, or mm -hmm. do you keep going to get these pictures done? Yeah, so it was more really about these kind of hardcore questions. journalism related. It is. You. It is a bit hardcore related, but we did obviously a lot of other things, and we had I had amazing tutors, and I had photojournalists who worked for the most amazing agencies, mm -hmm. um, and others who were artists. You know, I had some tutors who didn't touch a camera for such a long time and they only work with archive photography, which is another very interesting point to mention. Um, so I learned that photo photography, it's not all about having the most expensive gear, taking a lot of images and trying to get them published in some magazines. Mm -hmm. It's about personal stories and it's about making your research done it's about collaborations. It's about speaking to writing journalists, trying to find some people um, that you like to join to get a story done. And these are aspects I learned from the course as we are still a very bounded group of people following the same idea and uh, making journalists happen. And it's about contacts. And um, this is what I learned and what I gained from this uh, course um so nicely okay so uh, some of my students are very curious about like for their higher studies so uh, so could you uh, give some tips like uh, what are the courses they have uh, they offered for like photojournalism you have told me about they have uh, short term courses as well as uh, degree courses so could you please uh, tell definitely so i th first of all it's maybe worth mentioning um london College of Communication belongs to URL. URL is, as far as I know, the UK's biggest art school. And it is, I think, second in the world, okay. uh, which is quite impressive. Therefore, they have a very good social media account, a very good website. And this is where most of the information are given as well, if you like to get a little bit more into it. Um, my course is offered in so photojournalism and photo, uh, photojournalism and um, photo documentary is offered in in an online course as well as in a full time course, which is um, a big advantage. The online course in particular for people who already engage with work or are from international countries like. Let's say India, for instance, or Germany. I know some people who have never been into the actual place, but studied the same course because they can do it all online and submit their stuff online and have some Zoom um, sessions. And then there's the full-time course as well, which is a 50-month course. There's some short courses. There's bachelor courses. But um, I think some of the general photography courses are very similar to what is offered at ILEAD. So it's no, not a need to come to the UK to, to become an amazing photographer. So uh, please, <laughs> training, it's, it's what you learn, you know? 
the other thing is just a little add on to it. Sure. So uh, let me share some pictures uh, from your LLC, like this one. <laughs> this is my, your graduate my, my smile. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, super happy. Yeah. I'm always smiling. happy. I'm always smiling. <laughs> it's really nice. So this was during your graduation day, right? That was, yeah. I think my mom took this picture with her phone and um, still a bit angry. Look, it's like no, nothing is in place. It, it looks like I, I come from, I don't know, from, from the dance floor, really. Thanks to my mom. I hope she's listening to us as well. <laughs> Great. So next, uh, next we'll be talking about your uh, different areas of photography. So we are going to start with this one. So could you please uh, elaborate on what kind of photography is this and share before, your experience. Before we start, let me just grab the book because yeah, uh, yeah. this is what it's all about. It's a bit far away and back in a sec. Uh, fine. So, uh, so we are going to have a very nice interaction session after we are done with this, uh, after we are done with uh, his work. Yeah. Are you ready, Felix? I am ready, yes. Yeah. So this is my master thesis. Um, I think you've got you've got a picture of that as well, don't you? So to show this a little bit better. I have. I will. I will show. Um, so this is this is a book um, that I made uh, for my master thesis, like I said. So the assignment was about um, a story. We had like three months time um, to create something and we had like a year to prepare everything. Um, and the preparation took place, I think, from November until June. And my idea was to document the life and the work on a uh, container vessel. So okay. this book is the full outcome. And what we're going to do now, as far as I know, we're going to go through some images, right? And I just right. tried to explain yeah. a few things about it. Yeah. So yeah, this is my this is my secret love, the sea. Mm -hmm. I love water. Um, water is my element. I love, I don't know, everything that is related to water, uh, in particular boats. And I think this is just a little introduction of um, myself there, isn't it? Um, it's the sea. There's nothing much to, to, to explain about it. It's, it's my feeling. When I look at this picture, I feel how I feel. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. <laughs> um, yeah, the Sun Discovery. This is the vessel that I was on. Um, it's a 200 meter container ship. It's a multi-purpose vessel actually, which means it's capable to transport those containers as well as some uh, loose good, uh, goods. Um, it's like 50 meters wide. This picture was taken in Italy. Uh, our route was from north of Germany uh, down to Africa west coast of Africa, then in the Mediterranean Sea. Um, that was on my route back at some point. And we, yeah, we were at this port for almost two weeks or so. It was quite a long journey. Uh, nothing mm -hmm. really happened, but uh, I had some chunks um, to spend some joy time on the beach and, uh, yeah, met some new Italian friends when I was there. Um, because we stood in this harbor for so long. But this is just an, a little view on the boat that I was engaged with for, for a long time. So uh, I'm very curious like, uh, to know about the job uh, as a photographer for this kind of assignment. <laughs> it was very interesting, though. Um, yeah, I think, you know, I'm, I'm capable to speak English, whereas no one on board was. It was a 16-man oh. crew, all Russian speakers. <laughs> okay. I don't speak any Russian. Do you? They, I don't. They, no. um, and this is not like only only the, the master. So the captain, he spoke some English, and the first mate. Uh, so I used them as somehow as um, a translator. But for the most of the journey, it was very like the situation that I had when I was in India. We didn't mm -hmm. have the language in common. I know how okay. to say Privyat. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's all. Um, 
and but it was not needed because it was a documentary. I didn't tell them what I want them to do. It was quite the opposite. They did what they do on a regular basis when they're on their sea passage. And this was important for me. So I was part of it, but I wasn't. I was there, but I wasn't. I was involved, but I wasn't. And this is uh, keen um, when you're a photographer observing people at work. Mm -hmm. So like that so, Okay, so uh, mainly your job was to document uh, those kind of uh, scenes, right? Like I said, it was not really a job. It was my personal story. Um, and I was very interested myself on the work uh, and the life on a container vessel. You have to assume that, or you have to imagine those seamen, they're mm -hmm. traveling the world and they're on board for half a year. And then they're off for like three months to see their families. And then they're aware again for another six months. Especially in the Philippines, the Philippines are very well known for the seamen. And some of them, they're even away for two years. And I mm -hmm. wanted to find out what do they do? How do they spend their time and life? Is there really everything, something to do? And I figured out, yes, there is. You, will, you, you saw the picture beforehand and you will see some more later on. They, they, they do painting. They have to steer the boat through the sea. They have to fix things. They have to take care of things. And they have to do a lot of preparation before they enter uh, new harbors. Um, and that was really surprising for me. I thought they have a great time. I thought there's someone steering the vessel. And other than that, they play ping pong or, I don't know, basketball or football on the boat and lying in the sun. No, from 7 in the morning until late in the evenings, they're at work. Mm -hmm. And that was something I wanted to find out. Very nice. So this is how you have documented uh, those uh, those scenes, right? That's my really? cabin. <laughs> this is your cabin. Okay. This is this okay. is where I lived for six uh, for for three months. Sorry, yeah. So. Mm -hmm. um, wow. So again, um, you see this letter steps there, and this is exactly where I was. So I I wasn't afraid of doing something. Um, dangerous. You see, he's he's leached. He's he's on on something secured, and I yeah. wanted to do the same. And I said, guys, I want to go with you. And they were like, really? I said, yes. I said, I want to go there. I want to get the shot. And when you like to get the shot done, you have to be as close as possible. And this is again something very similar we saw in the previous chapter when we spoke about those photographs in India. Mm -hmm. Come close. Ask people if you can come close. If you have the opportunity to spend a lot of time with them, like I had, I was with them like for three months. So they mm -hmm. know me, they saw me every day. I was friends of them. So okay. they let me do my job as well as I let them do their job. So I mm -hmm. inter interrupt them in anything. I just wanted to get my pictures. And this is why I sometimes had to go in some rather dangerous angles as well. But I think mm -hmm. it was worth it. <laughs> Uh, obviously and i'm um, also want to know something like what kind of gears that you have used for uh, this particular uh, photograph like uh, more on, on that what, one what yeah. on go so on on that one because it was there was no water involved really um it was just my normal camera and i think on that documentary um it was the 70 uh, the 2470 lens because I needed some more space and because I wanted to come a little bit closer sometimes I used the 70 mil and um, instead of the Indian project where I mainly use the 30 35 mil here it was the 24 7 um, so I had the opportunity to zoom in a little bit and zoom out um, and did a bit of cropping afterwards mm -hmm. so yeah so for that one, everything is fine. Uh, but just uh, one thing to mention sometimes on all my cameras, I, I don't know, can you see that? I've got uh, like a rubber, silicon rubber uh, protecting my camera for some bounces and some, some scratches and some gust and stuff. That's something I absolutely recommend having. Yeah. So it will protect your camera and especially with the jacks, like microphone jacks, uh, HDMI jacks and all. 
Yeah, and it, it, it's just, it's just, I don't know. I when I feel my camera is protected, I feel better, oh. and I, I put myself more in risk. It's like wearing a helmet when you're on a cycle, on a, on a bike. Huh? When you don't have yeah. a helmet on, you of uh, you're cycling very carefully. If your helmet on, you feel like you're a racer, and this is the same here. When I feel my my gear is protected. Then I go mm -hmm. out there and I, I I don't mind. I want to get the shot. I know it doesn't make sense, but I think no, uh, it's, we it's want to really get the shots done. Yeah. <laughs> really important. Yeah. So wow, this is also a very nice. Like uh, I can see a uh, very nice uh, leading lines as well as a frame within a frame. I can see the this structure also. So yeah, it's oh, that 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 was the beauty about it and. Um, just to show you the before before I um, mention some words here, but you can mm -hmm. see this. Um, this is actually the cover is a photograph of um, the the floor of this ship. So it's it's rusty red floor paint um, with all these little holes and scratches. And this is what the boat, the steel, the boat was made of. Um, so this color was pretty much everywhere. And if you go back on this photographs that you just presented there, it's the same mm -hmm. here. So everything was red and red. And if you're in an yeah. environment where just one color is very dominant, you start getting comfortable with it and you try to use this color um, as part of the whole image. And this is exactly what happened there. So obviously there's a lot of tones, some are darker spots, some lighter spots. Light mm -hmm. is important. And then it's obviously the person with the face in. But again, it's not staged. He did his job. I was standing around. I was trying to find the frame within the photograph um, to get this shot done. And this is, um, again, something where I had a lot of time to make my pictures, my photography happen. And um, the colors itself is something that you will find in my images in the series everywhere. Because it's a color contrast. Yeah. Yeah. And red is amazing. You can do so much about with red. I think red I hate green. You have a beautiful you have a beautiful yeah, backdrop. A green, Very green, green backdrop. You're looking you're looking amazing. No, but I mean um red is is my color. We can do so much with red. I don't know. It's so it's so strong, it's so powerful. And there's a very happy red, but there's also a very rusty and powerful and dangerous red in some of the pictures, like blood, you know. It's good. It's a good color. So next one again, the really nice point of view. So from top angle shot, so really nice. Yeah, and it's 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 not just the the bird perspective. I think it's also that um, there's again a line, a line that helps your eye to orientate. So yeah. obviously it's the leech there, um, mm -hmm. and it is it is the reflection on that side. So I think this is always important when you. I, I'm not a big fan of drone photography, even though I have a drone. Mm -hmm. But drone, everything always like 100% from top. Mm -hmm. And I like to have a bit of an angle and a little mm -hmm. bit of guidance uh, towards your main object. And this is what is uh, made by, by lines. And lines are very incredible. And I think you have like three lines here. You have this little yeah. white spot um, on the uh, left uh, lower corner. Um, you have the one, the steel line, and then you have the leech, and uh, it takes the view towards the object. Hmm. True. And what about this one? He, he was worker, or he was the captain of the ship? No, he's he's he's. Um, I think he was the lowest of all. Uh, Stages or no position. What yeah. hierarchy is? Was the word hierarchy? Is that the word? So you have the captain first, then you have the first mate, the second mate, third mate, and then mm -hmm. you have some in between. And he was really like the assistant of the assistant, uh, but a nice person. And uh, I think this somehow shows of how I take my photographs and my portraits. Mm -hmm. It's not about the face only. I wanted to show him within an environment sure. that where you can find him. And again, when you reflect back to the Indian photographs that we looked at uh, before, and um, you you see somehow my my line 
through my my photographs that I'm also very much interested in what happens in the background, but I still mm -hmm. want the face as the main catcher, mm -hmm. which I think it's here. And I don't mind to have someone in full length as well. It's still a portrait for me. Even with this uh, this particular image, I can see like uh, his working environment as well as uh, like the things uh, he he was dealing with uh, in his regular life. So it speaks lots lots of things. Right? By observing this uh, photograph, I can see so many things. Yeah. So photograph speaks several words. Right. So that's the main motive of uh, photojournalism and photojournalistic yeah. aspects of photography. Yeah. And I think this is the difference when you do photos. It's the same here. I think this is very much the same description. So obviously, I, I could have taken a picture of his face, but his mm. face doesn't explain who he is. It's different when it's about one particular person, like someone someone you know or someone famous or someone beautiful or even have someone is, is, is scratched somewhere or like a, a scarf, you know? Then, then you, you want to explain something through face expression. But mm -hmm. this person is not really interesting. He's a worker. He's a he's a nice guy, hundred percent. But it's important who he is. He's an engineer, mm -hmm. so he has everything under control that is related to the engine, to the heart of the ship. He sees all those numbers, those buttons, um, those fingers on the on 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 the board showing I don't know the pressure uh, within. You know, I'm, I'm not an engineer, but you know what I mean? Yeah. He has full control of what he does there. He does it because he knows what he do. So it's important mm -hmm. about his job, it's about his job, and it's about still about him, isn't it? It's still about him. Absolutely, yeah. The meaning is underlined, but we need to know what it's about. Mm. Even uh, same with these pictures also. Yeah, showing the laziness of port yeah. workers in Algeria, Africa. <laughs> Sorry. Nice moment has been captured. It was, yeah. it was a very, very hot day. I remember that. I think it was uh, 52 Celsius. So oh it, the, the sun was burning. You had like uh, wildfires and forest fires everywhere. That was mm -hmm. Algeria, so north of Africa. Mm -hmm. um, but I think what the the shot makes so interesting is apparently the sun stand. So you have this very long shadow. Um, you have those containers. And uh, with those boxes, you can do so much. I think everybody knows Lego. Um, and yeah, it's it's like someone, like a kid played with some toys and stapled things up on in that. Uh, like, and uh, yeah, and then you've got those uh, port workers having their lunch. Uh, mm -hmm. with their helmets on or not on. Um, so it's a lot of colors again. Huh? True. And I can see uh, different kinds of geometrical shapes also. Yeah, absolutely. So, so those are the things which like uh, make your composition uh, much more enriching, right? So really nice. Really, I, I, and the most interesting is the expression of each of the workers. <laughs> see? They have different kinds of uh, contrast between their own expressions also. So it's really nice. Yeah, I, I, I doubt that they knew that I took this picture. <laughs> it's from, from some distance. Yeah. Wow, well, I, I am like very much uh, fond of this particular angle. So uh, this is a low angle shot, right? And it's a very low angle shot, yeah. And um, it's interesting. So being tall has some serious advantages, apparently. So I, I don't want to mention it too often, but I'm almost, I'm one meter 98 uh, tall, um, which obviously allows me to come from really up high, but when I knee down, I can come from low. And trying different perspective is very important as well. And this is exactly what happened here. Uh, you see a hint of his face, oh. just enough of, seeing where he looks at and he is focusing on his work again um he he is trying to engage this block with the pontoon hmm. um and again it is important to show with your camera angle of what he does when you come from a slightly higher perspective you wouldn't see his face and you wouldn't see that he interacts 
with um, the bit that he is focusing on. And this is why a low angle situation can sometimes help to understand um, the relationship between the person in the picture with what he's focusing on as well, especially yeah. when it's a documentary process. You know, it's not a portrait here. It's, it's really about work progress, process, sorry. Even even uh, you have placed one worker on the left hand side in your frame also. So is that a particular reason behind it or something? You know, none of these pictures is staged, and um, I think it's it's sometimes good that you cannot to explain that some jobs can only be done with like in a team. True. And this is exactly what happens there. But I think I didn't really pay a lot of attention to that. Like you know, I'm a photographer. I know what I do. Because I, I've done some things for a long time, and obviously I'm getting better the more pictures I take. This is training. It's the same in sports. It's the same with everyone. Mm -hmm. But we all know that you cannot take the best picture when you try so hard to take the best picture. You sometimes have to bit of luck. And when I look through my viewer, obviously I focus on the person in front of me. And mm -hmm. we we can we can see a lot. I think as photographers, we are able to see more than a normal person does because we somehow have a bit of a wide angle view, and we are scanning our environment more than other people do. Like some look going through the streets like that, I go through the streets like this. But we still <laughs> oversee a few things when we look through a viewer, and then we do our edits and we do our selects, and then we realize, oh look, there's someone in the background. That's great. So you know. Luck, luck is so important as well, sure. and I think it makes the picture somehow again. It's a bit of symmetric, and it's another person, and it's teamwork. But that was not the main reason for taking this picture to get everything in the perfect, um, I don't know, positioning of the elements. Yeah, yeah. So, so this is uh, this is his his cabin, right? Or it's his cabin, um, and this is another portrait. And again, it was obviously about him, mm -hmm. but I wanted to show his cabin. I wanted to show the world where he lives and where he spends his six months when he's on duty. And I think this is important. Um, of course, he has a has a interesting face as well. But imagine I just show your face. His face is the same face, in a sense, to uh, a lot of other people. But not a lot of other people are in a cabin on a container ship at that certain moment. So it's important to show that the window, which is a very particular window that you have on boats, you know, you can lock them properly. So when there's storms and waves and wind and rain, you don't want the window open and let the rain in. So you lock them properly so they're closed, they're waterproofly closed and clocked and this is important and it's a very small cabin so you see there's a share on the right hand side they can barely put his legs down yeah, yeah. Um, and this is where he lives for six months and i think this is important to show again him as the person i want to present his life he's important for me he's got a name but it's also mm -hmm. important for me to show where he is and then there's the yeah, and then there's the 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 um, the share on one side, which is a nice frame as well. There's the wall, which gives in line, and on the other hand, you on the other side, um, you have another frame by by the curtain. You see that that yeah. is, again gives a little bit of a fixed point fixed to point, balance yes. the picture mm -hmm. nicely. And and also in this particular photograph, uh, you have used this uh, natural light source very interestingly. So on the left hand side, uh, you are getting some natural light source from the sun rays, right? And yeah. the uh, the over if you see the photograph of this particular person, so this portion is very well lit. So like if you you have done lots of commercial shoot shoots also. So we use this kind of lighting effects for uh, three dimension factor, right? So in this way, you have used a very nice way by using the natural light source and you have created a three dimensional patterns. Like we are getting a very nice highlight. We are getting a shadow oh, yeah. and also we are getting a midpoint. So yeah. this is how you have to think, right? In this kind of situation. So um, I, could, I could show you many more 
um, of portraits that I took in, in recent years. And you will realize that I often place people close to a window. Um, mm -hmm. I, I know how to use artificial lights. I know how to use flashlight. And when I do advertising shoots for, for um, like fashion companies and so on, then yes, indeed, I need flashlight because models are moving, they're fast, they're running around, and you want to really freeze them in the moment. But when we speak about documentaries, mm -hmm. we don't want to change lighting. Yeah. Lighting is a variable through the sun, windows, mm -hmm. and even some spots on the wall. Uh, yeah. Sorry, on the ceiling. And mm -hmm. sometimes it is not ideal, but it's about our story. And we, as photojournalists, we don't mind to rise our, our ISO to mm -hmm. a high extent. Obviously, we cannot overdo it. Yeah. But we, we don't mind noise. And mm -hmm. it's important to get the shot. Yes. And that, that, that particular noise is also part of your photograph and the part of your environment. Absolutely. Obviously. It's about a story instead. But this is the important thing. Obviously, I could have placed him somewhere else and get mm -hmm. the shot nicely. But mm -hmm. still to thrill, oh, sorry, blah, 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 still <laughs> try to find some light and when mm -hmm. there's a light source available like this window is mm -hmm. make it part of the image cool. you know if i if i asked him to sit on the chair the light wouldn't be the same yeah. but i know i want him to take these pictures within this environment so this is my main idea so i come in i look right i look left i look up i look down and say okay it's not much space how do we get the shot in Okay, this was nice, this is nice, there's a share, there's a bed, shall we do the share, shall we bed? Where's the light better? Oh, the light is better the closer you're to the window. Okay, done. We're going to take this back here. And this is how you should communicate with the person that is opposite you. Advise mm -hmm. them. You know, you, you're the expert, and they do whatever you want. And this one is staged. All portraits are staged. On portrait side, you want people to look into your camera. So also tell them to sit down where you want them to sit. And when there's a window by, nearby, it's the most mm -hmm. handy situation ever because it gives you this nice modulation along the face. That's very nice. So next, next, this is also very nice. And I think uh, this is a perfect example of low light uh, photography, right? Again, yeah, lighting source is the screen. Yeah, uh, it's super super dark. What they use is red light because it's um, it allows you to still see things, but they like to keep things very pitch black when they're um, on the bridge. This is like where all the controlling happens on a on a on a vessel in general, and um, we all know this experience when we have our room lit. And we look through out of the window in the middle of the night, we barely see anything. If you turn the light off, we all of a sudden see the stars. And this is exactly what happens here. They still have to see everything that happens around them. There are other ships, there's no roads, they can go left, they can slowly more right. They can always there's always danger around them. There's some boys, there's some signals, some lights. So they have to keep it super, super dark on the bridge. So they have this red light, and mm. this shot was taken on a very high ISO. I swear, it was a very high ISO. It was the 35 milliliter, uh, mil lens again, 1.4. The focus okay. is on the eye. It was very hard to keep it steady. It was a lot of shots taken. Um, but I, again, try to find the best light source, and the best light source available in this room was the computer screen. And mm -hmm. this happened that you can use whatever for it, even a phone. Coming closer with a phone and you have some lines and you get a shot, but you always need a little bit of modulation there. Otherwise, you don't find his face. And when you look yeah. at a picture and you have a person in it, you want the viewer look at the picture, at the face first, because this is how you communicate. Again, communication is such an important word when it comes to photography. Mm -hmm. So again, so now we'll be uh, There's watching. There's the smile again. <laughs> You're the captain, right? Oh my god! I, I'm the Please. captain. 
Yeah, I was I was even allowed to do like a 60 degrees turn. I was so excited. I had to, there was this little wheel and I had to do it like step by step, like 10 degrees, 10 degrees, 10 degrees. And it takes some time until the boat does the actual turn. I was so nervous. <laughs> and I was like, can you please take a picture? And I was like still very focused, like my normal typical smile with my wide mouth and like take picture. And I was again, like focusing on what I do. So this is behind the scenes. <laughs> Those are the fun elements, you know, those are the experience related to those kind of out, out, outdoor assignments. So 100%. Uh, you are going to like uh, communicate with several uh, several types of people. You are going to learn so many things. And this is the main, main uh, like joy of being a, a like a photographer being on board with this kind of expertise team. Absolutely. Uh, but, but generally speaking, being a photographer gives you access to everything. Can you imagine when you speak to a seaman, they say mm -hmm. their job is a normal job. If you speak to a policeman, they say their job is a normal job. If you speak yeah, to a surgeon, yeah. they say it's a normal yeah. job. But us <laughs> as photographers, we can be a surgeon for a day. We yeah. can be, I don't know, a police officer for a day. We can be a seaman, a captain, whatever. Um, or we can, can be, um, we're going to see some other words. We can be an engineer for a day. Photography True. gives us access, and it's a good excuse to contact people and saying, hey, I'm a photographer. Can I take some pictures? You can have them or you can use them. Um, or in the beginning, of course, when you do it like as a, as a professional, then you make your living out of it, so you have to ask for money. But especially as a beginner, speak to the people, ask if you can take some pictures. Obviously, you will receive some no's but you will mm -hmm. maybe get some yeses as well. And when you have a yes, you have the X's and start shooting. Sure. Now, uh, this is your book that you have showed. So uh, I'll be posting the link of your website also in the description of this particular video so that uh, everyone can uh, go through your website for uh, various kinds of pictures, as well as uh, you have put all the photo photographs that you have put in this particular book yeah, on your Course, right? with all the photographs so yeah. please have a look and uh, see some more of that work it was a very exciting very exciting project yeah. something i will certainly never forget and i'd like to share with you and i really really like the uh, book of our you know i can feel the texture like uh, it's really interesting and it's really uh, like uh, amazing like it is it is the floor. It is literally like I have my camera, I, I widen up my legs and I was taking the picture from down. So it's an actual it's an actual photograph. True. So now we'll be coming towards your most uh, passionate uh, field, which is selling. So uh, yes. I'll be starting with this particular uh, uh, I think uh, your this is your pictures and it got published in uh, this particular website right? yeah it's, it's um so this was also in the printed version this is obviously a screenshot uh mm -hmm. it was um yacht is uh, european's uh, biggest yacht, um, yachting magazine so they have quite a few followers um a lot of magazines published and they're existing for many many years so it's quite an honor to work for them on a very regular basis even yeah, very right. you, are still, uh, you are still associated with them, right? Yeah. Great. So now this is the most exciting part of your life. This is <laughs> <laughs> finally. And, uh, <laughs> uh, <yes. laughs> now feel free to like share your experience. I'm very happy to do so. Um, yeah, like like the previous project that we looked at about the container vessel, you see the similarities. I love water. And uh, likewise, for you guys, whoever listens at the moment or watching us, some do cricket, some do football, others do tennis, a few do running, and I grew up with sailing. Um, it's, it was my father's sport, and I took over. Um, I've been doing sailing for many years myself. Um, and at some point, I understood that I can combine my photography with sailing. And I think that was the greatest gift someone gave to me ever because having the opportunity to shoot your passion through a camera 
is unbelievable. You cannot get enough of it. And it doesn't matter how annoying your client is. It doesn't matter of how pushy the magazine is that you work for. You do it because you love it. It's passion. And as soon as you have passion, you try new things out. And it's not annoying to go out there, reload your batteries, recharge, uh, recharge your batteries, sorry, um, get your memory cards empty, make your equipment nice and tidy and clean and go out and shoot it's always about passion and something that i love and this is why it's so amazing true so uh, next uh, photograph we are going to see like what are the challenges you face especially for this kind of selling photography and uh, i'm also curious to know like what kind of gadgets uh, do you use? Uh, mostly, I'm going. I have seen some of your underwater pictures also. Yeah, let's let, let's do that when we when we have the when we reach the underwater uh, picture because then okay. then I can explain a little bit more about it. Um, I I, def I definitely have some some stuff here by the side, so I'm going to grab it and show it into the camera. Um, but I think this is a very good example. This one and the previous one in particular. Let's let's go for the previous one. Right. Yeah. So uh, with sailing, it is an outdoor sport. And it's the same with running and with um, surfing and uh, mountain biking or whatever you do in your free time. Um, you never know how the weather conditions are like. And of course, you can do a little bit of planning beforehand when it comes to a commercial shoot. So you can look at the weather forecast and say, OK, in two days time, the weather is going to be good. It's going to be a sunny day. And it's wind. Wind is so important. Without wind, there's no action. The pictures appear very boring. Um, and then you can maybe do your little bit of timing. That shot was, for example, taken during winter time. So this, the sun was very low. It gave me the good chance um, to have this crispy, cold feeling and the wave and the water. But this is obviously the most challenging part. So you have to protect your gear because there's a lot of water around can always happen that the camera drops and falls in water. Knock wood, never happened to me yet, and hopefully will never happen. Um, but still, I'm mostly in salty water environments. So my camera sometimes look a bit gray because you've got like all the dried out salt on your lenses on your camera. Um, then there's the wind that you have to take good care of. No wind, no sailing. And the weather and the light stand um you're on a on a free environment like there's i don't know how much you know about sailing but you cannot sail in all different directions it depends I, on I, what. I <laughs> so but you cannot you, for instance you cannot sail against the wind okay you can sail with the wind but not against the wind you can sail towards the wind but therefore the direction and the wind directions limiting the way you the boat can be driven so you as a photographer, you have to accept the conditions. And this is very important. And I think this is something you can copy into um, many other fields of photography that you cannot change things, but you have to accept things. And because it's difficult and challenging, you still have to get the best shots in. And this is why sailing photography is so exciting. True. I hope you understand sure. what I mean. But um, when we speak about this portrait we, we looked at beforehand with this young man uh, sitting in his cabin, it's, um, let's, let's try to transfer it on that. So you want to take a picture of him. You need to take this picture in this very small cabin. There's hardly mm -hmm. any light except from one window. And someone tells you you have to take this picture in here. So what okay. you do, you're very challenging. You cannot change the cabin. You cannot take oh. him and sit him somewhere else. You have to do it in there. So what you do, you try to get the best results in. So what? Uh, uh, so what is the word? So what? Uh, so matter what? Huh? This is exactly what happens there. You cannot change it. You have to accept it, and you have the freedom and the power and the skills to get the good picture in. And this is how sailing photography works. Mm -hmm. So it's really challenging. I can see the pictures also. So how do you manage? Like, uh, so it's like uh, you are in the boat. I think this kind of sailing boat. And how do you manage to click such moments? Uh, um, I'm on a power boat, on a motorboat. Um, mm -hmm. I've got a motorboat driver. Um, I so he's my my assistant, and I speak to him and say, go drive a little bit for the left, go a little bit for the right. Um, 
And um, I, because I know sailing my, myself, because I'm a sailor, so I know the sports and I have the understanding of, of sailing and of um, wind. Because of wind, I know what's going to happen next. And I know the rules that are happening on the water. Sailing is all about rules. You know, some boat is in right, some others are not. And you don't want to obviously crash in each other. So everybody is trying to follow some ideas. And I try to understand the ideas and trying to think ahead and see what's going to come next and where am I supposed to be to get the shot that I want. And um, so being on the motorboat means you have to go fast position yourself, wait, let the sailboat going towards you or away from you, and then wait for the moment and take the shot. Especially this one, for instance. You know, it's a very windy day. You see the power. Mm, I, I can see boat. that, yeah. You see the boat surfing down the wave that comes from behind. And mm. the, the nose, so that the peak of the boat is actually diving into the water. So you waiting for the right wave, you waiting for the power, and then for the other sailboats to come in to fill the frame again. And then you take your shot. So let's move to the next one. Oh, wow. Again, uh, low angle shot, very nice uh, use of uh, point of view. And also a very challenging. Is it raining? No, this is actually water coming from, from the top. From from the front spraying uh, over her. Mm -hmm. So this is how sometimes my camera looks a bit salty when I uh, complete. Even that. I can see some uh, sun flares also. It's yeah. Really, uh, backlighting. Really nice. Sun flares are nice. Never take them mm -hmm. out. Never, 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 yeah. never. They're beautiful. They're they're absolutely normal. Even when you watch like some Bolly Bollywood or Hollywood movie, yeah. there is some sun flares in it, and it, it's it's authentic. When you look into the sun, and then you have. You know your your brands here and looking like that. You you see some flare as well. So very normal. Mm -hmm. Never take them out. Love them. Okay. So again, a really nice point of view. And and I think this is a very low angle shot. And you are at the level of the sea also, right? Very very low angle shot. Um, uh -huh. I was leaning low, mm -hmm. leaning down in the motorboat that I was. So in the other boat to take the picture. And then I use mm -hmm. these. So this is my favorite. Seventy to two hundred. Yeah. Is the no? This is the hundred four hundred. So it's okay. Hundred four hundred. Uh, is it so two point eight throughout? Uh, uh, no, actually, it's not that. It's um. It's four point five to four point six. Okay. But it, it's fine because the longer the lenses are, mm -hmm. um, the, the the easier you lose depth of field. Absolutely. And, uh, you will get more shallow depth. Of you have a little bit of, of depth of field where you can put your focus on and still have the point in focus that you want to shoot. Here it's easy because, again, there was a face. I always put my focus on faces, to be honest. But when you shoot like a whole boat with more people on, you rather put it somewhere in the middle. Um, and uh, you still want the whole boat in the focus somehow. That's why it's important to maybe be on 5.6 and it makes your lens a little bit sharper. I use hardly ever shoot on, on the open aperture. Mm -hmm. Great. So, yeah, so, uh, but long lenses gives you the opportunity to have some, some, some waves in the front and give some foreground as well. And good, good depth of field also so that you can separate the uh, subject and the background. Yeah, absolutely. Oh my God. This is very scary. <laughs> oh, you, you should experience it yourself. It's nice. <laughs> but you see, it's a bit of, sometimes I'm on, so for instance, for the shot, the previous one, sorry for, for jumping. This yeah. Mm -hmm. So this is something where I'm on board, for instance. Okay. So I'm with a woman. It's a woman's mm -hmm. only crew, so only female, which is really nice, really cool team. I like to work with them, and I, I work with them a lot. So this is mm -hmm. when I'm on board. You see, then I position myself and I'm on the action. And um, yeah. So then next one, you showed this one already. This is pure sailing. Really, really. So like... this is the boat bumping into the mm -hmm. water. Some poachers. So... <laughs> and obviously, you have used faster speed to capture the 
for freezing what, that uh, what, do you, what, what, what does say? what does the community think what is my aperture on uh, my my sorry my shutter speed on when i do these photographs okay okay what, what do you think <laughs> huh, sorry yeah, what do you think what does the community think what was my shutter speed on when i take these pictures i think more than uh, 1 by 200 of or 1 by 400 of a second 1 8000th one eight thousand. Oh yeah. my god. <laughs> that, because, that is the highest highest shutter speed that you have in your camera, right? Yes. <laughs> For me it's because one by four thousand. The boat, the boat yeah. is moving, you are moving and everything is moving. So yeah, this yeah. is why this is why yeah, my speed is so 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 high. <laughs> wow. <laughs> really nice. So uh, they are the uh, like team members of those sales? Yeah, of, of one of the boats, yeah. So this okay. is sometimes also something I do beside. Uh, so, so this is for the fashion brand there. This is San Pauli. It's okay. a football club, mm -hmm. um, but they do sponsoring and sailing as well. And this is one of the sailors, and it's for their fashion gear. So sometimes I do like both, asking the sailors to present uh, some fashion, um, mm -hmm. and it's cool because it's authentic people. It's sportsmen. Uh, they do their job. They're not professional models, but I know them well, so they're happy to be in front of my camera. And I'm just trying to use lighting um, to to show what the picture is about. And obviously, it's not so much about him. It's about the T-shirt that you can buy. So the the light point, the light spot is on his face. Mm -hmm. Great. So next. Oh, my god. This is also a very uh, nice uh, eye-level shot, like a very low yeah. point of view. And so uh, could you please uh, show like different gadgets you use uh, for taking shall this kind we, of shall we, move, shall we move to the one picture that you mentioned in particular? Uh, this uh, one? No, where, 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 with a wave. Ah, uh, uh, yeah. This, so the, this is a little bit on board. So the one is before mm -hmm. it's on board. And this is, um, yes, one my favorite, actually. I don't know if you can see this. Uh, just a minute, yeah. Oh. So, this is uh, in underwater housing. So this is a proper underwater housing that usually divers use or mm -hmm. photographers. So I can I can um, put that underneath water level, and then I try to keep the water like 50 50 in front of my lens this is made for a 16 to 35 millimeter lens so okay. i have so this is a, a lens specific right yeah this is lens specific so this is why okay. this is round and very wide angle mm -hmm. but if you show the shot again mm -hmm. yeah let me show yeah so i can i have the chance here to to adjust everything on my camera particularly mm -hmm. uh, so it's fully waterproof and then I put the focus on the sailboat. So this is where you see the sails. And I can see, um, see something from underneath, um, which is very interesting, I think. It gives a bit of a different angle, and mm -hmm. uh, especially when it's not as windy as it was on the previous shots. It's something you can nicely use to, to do something artistic. Um, yeah. yeah. It's, it's really nice, but I don't want to shock. So these are very expensive, let's be honest, but because I do so mm -hmm. much water sports, it was worth an investment. But what I can highly recommend um, is something like that. You can find it on Amazon. Um, yeah. It still, yeah. still gives I'm you the, the same. I'm familiar with this, yeah. Yeah. So obviously it's not as good but, as but you still. Is it safe? Compared to that I, one, I, I don't do diving. You know, I, I don't mm -hmm. go under the water like okay. fully, hundred percent. But mm -hmm. for something like you know, if you if you keep it if you keep it safe, mm -hmm. and you maybe put this part under water, and keep this try to keep this dry, it should work perfectly fine. So this is what yeah. I started with, and I had my my good camera in it as well, and it was all right, just to make sure the the top lid is oh. that, uh, it's not here yet yeah i usually keep this open and then another gadget i use is uh this one here um so okay. you put another picture uh, of me yeah uh mm -hmm. showing this a little bit more so this is perfect when it comes to spread water so everything that when you take pictures and it's raining and it's mm -hmm. uh, there's salt water involved 
So this uh, is a basically a rain coat for your uh, camera. Hundred right? percent. But the good thing about this one is, I've got. Can you see this? Uh, no, that's it. So there's there's this bit here, and this is goes over my eyepiece. So I have I have clear view through my camera. I can put my fingers, my hands in here, so I can control the camera nicely. I have can do all my adjustments and I can shoot and the camera is fully protected. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and you the have the full control over it. the uh, settings, full, camera settings. I full also. control because I put my camera, I put my hand here. If you show the other picture, then you can sh maybe show it better. Um, yeah, which one? The, the, the behind the scene of where you see me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Some more portraits. This one. Um, this one here. Yeah. So you yeah. see it. So see. So one hand is into this little bag. The lens yeah. has a clear view to the object. Obviously, it doesn't make the camera waterproofed, but everything that comes from above or from underneath is fine. And um, yeah, it keeps your camera dry and it allows me to work with a very better feeling because the camera is the most expensive thing that we do our jobs with. True. So she's also part of your uh, sailing team, right? She is um, an Olympian. Uh, so she sells Olympic boat class. Um, mm -hmm. Tina Lutz, she was a former world champion, uh, German, um, very successful sailor. And everybody needs their portraits for their social media or for some, some articles or whatever this is for. So yeah, mm -hmm. this is why portraits is, plays a big role in my sailing photography as well. Great. Yeah, and, and then, then this I've, is also part of this. Yeah, so this is again to other sailors, same thing, mm -hmm. a little bit of storytelling for the Instagram mm -hmm. saying, hey, we are in Portugal, um, we love life, we are happy. Same mm -hmm. again, it's again a female team. I don't know why I've chosen only female pictures here. <laughs> I do exactly the same with men. But uh, I think they're a little bit more open. So that was a yeah. This is a really nice uh, world championships again. Long lens, a lot of sailboats, mm -hmm. international and uh, yeah, international. I can see different uh, kinds of countries yeah. also. They're participating. Yeah. Yeah. Japan is there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Thailand. Nice. Yeah. Again, we have talked about this one. Really nice. So do you see it's a mixture of um, action about a uh, mm -hmm. trays and um, I think some very artistic pictures like this one is. So um, art is something I like too. And um, you don't do that often. But again, when you've got some time, then you take art. And uh, for this shot, I remember I was on a motorboat again and I positioned myself and I waited for this sailboat to come closer and closer. And when it was close enough, I took the picture to get this uh, composition in. Great. So uh, uh, Felix, uh, we have uh, some of my students from different school here, and they want to interact with you. So I think after this, we can continue with uh, some of your works also. So can I invite uh, one of them? Please, very welcome. <laughs> Thank you so much. So let me introduce uh, Arjun. Arjun is here. Yeah. Hi, Arjun. Hello. Hi, sir. There he is. Yeah. Hello. How are you doing? You good? Uh, yeah, I'm good. But what about you? I'm very, very good. Have you Have you enjoyed the session so far? Yes, I have been seeing it for the past two hours. It's really good. <laughs> Thank you very much. Great. So you've got so, some uh, questions, I heard, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so shall I start? Yes, please, please Arjun. Yeah. Okay. So uh, the first question is that, uh, as we know that there is an ever increasing competition in the field and videography. So uh, I would like uh, you to give me a few tips uh, so that we can stand out of the crowd, like to become to become a get a unique uh, personality in the 
whole field. Thank you very much. Um, it's a very good question. I think this is something that we all experience every day in and out. Um, I think it's mainly important that you believe in yourself. I think this is something I've always tried doing. Um, I always wanted, like, like at that point where I decided to become a professional photographer, I wanted it and it didn't matter what anyone else said. I said, I want to become a photographer, so I become a photographer. And I hope this is the same for you. I think the tip is train hard, be open, uh, speak to people that you trust, ask for advices, listen to advices, and try to find out your style. So it's always good to have a role model. It's always good to have someone explaining photography to you. But you have to, at one point, decide where you want to go and believe in what you want to do. And then you're going to get your targets in. And I think one more tip that I like to give to you is, um, oh, sorry, no, no, what, what was it? Ah, that's a shame. Um, <laughs> sorry, there was too much talking in the last two hours. There was actually something very important, and I hope I'm going to remember that so that we get this in. Um, that's the disadvantage of a live session. Huh? <laughs> um, no, we can discuss uh, discuss it later on also. Yeah, I, I, I probably I probably remember that soon. So again, mm -hmm. have your have your targets, have your clear vision, uh, never give up, and try to find your niche. That's also very important. It's harder to become a fashion or a photographer or a wedding photographer when you have a passion like my sailing mm -hmm. um, where you can see a good chance to develop yourself alongside the photography and place your photography and offer your work and to everyone possible and say hi i'm a professional photographer i can do it and i do it for you and uh, the more clients you have the better it works and then you're going to reach your targets 100 percent Okay, thank you. So, so uh, let me tell you. Uh, my next question Felix, is. Uh, yeah, yeah, Arjun. Go on. My next question is uh, that is photography using a mobile phone equally compatible? Because uh, there is an uh, there is such an advanced technology coming in new cameras. So using a mobile for photography for like amateur photographers is that uh, really helpful? I'm not a big fan of mobile devices, um, and I don't like to really to compare them with um, my my professional photography gear. Um, I know it's it's good for an amateur. It's good enough for me when I'm traveling, when I'm with my partner uh, on holidays. Um, I don't want to carry my big cameras with me, and of course, it's very impressive what those mobile devices are capable of uh, shooting. However. Um, it's very automatic photography and I think we are here to learn the basics of photography and the knowledge of what you can achieve with the right use of your camera and like I said throughout the session is always put your focus right always put your focus on the faces doesn't matter what of you have a whether you have like a foreground a background on the faces in the very background, but you like to have it there and you have the chance to choose the pictures, the, the point, and they can do that through your camera. And you cannot do that with your phone. It's not the same. You're not shooting raw. You're not shooting on 300 DPI. Um, it's maybe good enough for your social media, but soon as someone asks you for a big print that they like to have hung in their living room, it's not the same. So remain shooting on your normal DSLR or mirrorless camera, whatever you use, but use it professionally. And uh, let me tell you, Felix, uh, Arjun is a very good photographer and I'm going to share some of his clicks. So I think we'll be so happy to uh, see some of his captured image. So let's start with this one. So this is the one then. Ah. And he, he has captured uh, those image by using his mobile phone. 
Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's it's, it's okay. too good. Nice. And he's a, he's one of my students from uh, Lakshmipat Singhania School. Yeah, that's it. So, do you want to uh, say something? Yeah, definitely. About those photographs. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it, when I see at these pictures, I think you're very passionate uh, about still lives, aren't you? So it seems that you've yes, taken the yes. time, especially the one. Um, what was it called? The butterfly, huh? So the one with the butterfly. I think it's not easy to take a picture of a butterfly because if you move far, too fast, it will disappear. It will fly away. Yes. So I, I feel I, that I took I twenty to 30, 30 minutes just to capture that one photo. So it, it it was really it was really time taking hard work. Like it was frustrating sometimes. I can I can see this, and this is really good. And I feel this is the same with your flowers as well. Um, because there are like so many flowers and I feel you chose one those flowers for a reason. And I think this is a very good habit uh, when you're a photographer. And I think you could be a very good analog photographer as well because it, it feels that you choose your object wisely. And uh, sorry what I said about mobile devices. This is obviously okay. my, my, my personal... I, I know it. It's my, my personal experience, and I. But you you've got the look. You look to see something that other people maybe don't see. So I know that you're very capable of doing very good photography with any sort of camera. And maybe try analog for you, because if you take your time to get the shots done, do it with an analog camera. Maybe especially you are someone to do that. Absolutely, because you you're a time uh, time taker, and that's a positive thing to be. Okay, thank you so much, Arjun. So uh, next, thank I'm you, going to Bye. Uh, I'm going to introduce Gauri. So uh, she is one of my students from Newtown School. So Hello. Gauri, please introduce Hello. yourself. You good? Yeah, I'm good. How are you? Very good. Thank you very much for joining us. It's good to have you here. Pleasure to. Did you enjoy it? Is it is yeah. it all right? <laughs> cool. What's your question? So, like, you go on a lot of travel tours for your photography, right? So, what all do you take with you for your photography sessions? Too many things. Like way way, way too many things. Um, so, obviously, I've got I've got my my case. So this is my my case. So like a camera back. And I'm trying to put everything major in there. So it's my my cameras. I usually travel with two cameras, okay. especially when I'm on assignment. This is due to you never know what happens. And if you've got a client with you, I imagine your camera drops, you would like to complete the job. So I have twice the same camera. And um, obviously, it's very important that you do a lot of research beforehand, knowing what the job is about. When you know that you shoot just one person in one location and it's going to be in front of one backdrop, you know that you only need one lens. Okay. So I'm trying to always limit my equipment on its very minimum. But okay. when it's about documentaries and it's about a whole story, then I take as much equipment that I can take with me, which makes my, my bag really, really heavy. Um, but so, yeah, it's, it's the camera, it's one lens, maybe another lens. It's a reflector. I often have a reflector with me just in case yeah. I like to take some portraits and it's good to, to bounce some light in the scenery. Yeah. Um, yeah, and my laptop, because even when I'm working remote and being on a location, it's good to have access to a laptop and you can back up your memory card straight away. But this yeah. is when I'm on a job, not when I do a travel or anything. Yeah. Like Okay, and so uh, Felix, let me uh, share some of uh, his taken pictures also. So sure, she is also a very good photographer. But but ask your so question. I can I can look I can look at the pictures and you ask your second question. Yeah, yeah, carry on. Among the gadgets you own, is there something you think you shouldn't have brought it? 
So you mean from you mean like my my equipment that I own that there's something yeah. that I oh uh, I've got one fifty mil prime lens that I hardly ever used, but it was um, one of my first I uh, I bought and therefore I think it's still a very good lens to have as a backup. Um, but the good thing is even though you don't use it someone else wants to use it so i'm a big fan of second hand markets and i bought bought a, quite a few equipment second hand yeah. so um that's why at the moment i don't feel that there's anything because everything that i bought and i don't need i sold to someone else okay. wow okay. you like you yeah, like this is... you like bright lights no and colors so we have two so and, far. Huh? Yeah, this is the one. Yes. Nice. Yeah, you like. So it's pretty much. I don't know whether you heard what I said to. I forgot his name, unfortunately. But the the guy who was here beforehand, um, before you, it's the same. Um, you trying you 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 do a very nice cropping there and i feel that you take some time as well to find the right shot before you release yeah. the shutter um again maybe analog is something that you can try out uh just for a few um it feels that your exposure looks really well set and can i see the other one as well i think this is a very interesting yeah like flowers is always this nice to shoot yeah. apparently but uh I think this is very, very strong because it's a very dark environment. And what you chose to do is you set your exposure right for the sky. And the sky looks very powerful, but you still see a little bit of, um, of where you are, the environment. I don't know if that is palm tree or whether this is a must or something yeah, like that. That is a, a light force uh, taking or something like that. This oh, one. I see. But this is this is great. It's 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 a very interesting and powerful picture, and uh, I think it, it's very wisely chosen to mm -hmm. take this picture out of many others. Very nice. Um, how comes that all your pictures are portrait? Why don't you have any any landscapes? No, no. I just use my phone or like a normal camera. Yeah, but they are still still more. More like more portrait than I, yeah. Okay. You're talking about the aspect ratio, right? Those are like yeah. four is to three kind of. So when I take a photo, I can do it this way or this way. Mm -hmm. oh, sorry, this way. And it seems that most of your pictures are taken this way rather than this. Yeah. Well, I never do. I don't know. It's interesting. I like it. It's it's nothing bad about it, but obviously it makes the picture a little bit more stable when you do mm -hmm. landscapes. So, because everything that is up high, like a tower or so, there's more tension to one or to the other side, so it seems that it's about to fall. But your pictures have, have another anchor, so like the sunspot here. So again, it's very balanced. It's just an interesting question from my side why I asked, but very nice. Yeah, thank you, sir. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Gaudi. Uh, thank you, next, sir. I'll be uh, introducing uh, Slok, uh, Slok, are you here? Yes, sir. Okay. So, uh, Felix, uh, meet Slok. Uh, Hi, sir. He's a very passionate photographer come videographer. And uh, could you please introduce yourself, Slok? Hi, sir. I'm Slok Talani. I'm from Lakshmivat Singhani Academy. And I'm a videographer. Nice. So, you can teach me more than I can teach you, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so, what's your question? So uh, my question is, uh, which lens do you carry when you are in travel? When you travel? So you probably watched the whole interview, huh? Um, so the 35 mil is always with me, and I think even for video, it's a very nice lens. I know some videographer who use a 35 mil prime lens for their photography, for their videography as well. Um, it's my 2470, which is a very good lens. And when I do my sailing, you probably realize that I do a lot of sailing. It's uh, mainly the 100 to uh, 400 um, to get like really close to the shot. But I think it's not an ideal image, uh, sorry, an ideal 
uh, lens for your purposes. Um, but I think a 2470 is a very good average length because you go wide angled and you kind of come a bit closer. So you can cover pretty much everything from, from a landscape shot towards a portrait. Thank you, sir. So my next question is, uh, what are your camera settings? Manual. Follow light. Or everything. <laughs> Everything is on manual. <laughs> yes. Can you imagine that? <laughs> so um, they, I, I, I don't know. It really depends. Sorry, I didn't want to push you in any any um, corner or so. But uh, the thing is, everything on my camera. So I can't. I don't know whether you see this. There's this M, and yes, my 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 focus finding is on auto. So I've I've got my presets on on um, one shot, for instance, and I try to find my focus right, so this happens automatically through the lens. But other than that, my shutter speed, my aperture, my ISO, everything is on manual um, due to that I want to be in power of what the outcome of my photograph is. And uh, this is why phones work, but they are not ideal because the camera from the phone helps you to get the shot in. Whereas when you do everything on manual mode, it's your decision making, creating your own work. Does that make sense? Yes, sir. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you so All much. The best. Thank you, sir. <clears throat> so next, I'm going to introduce uh, Priyal. So Priyal, could you please introduce yourself? Hi, sir. I'm Priyal from Lakshmi Pat Singhani Academy. Very nice to meet you. Very nice to meet you too. Welcome. Oh, can I see the anchor? The, the oh, anchor sorry. there. Can I see the anchor? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> ah, look, she's oh, a sailor herself. <laughs> see, I'm already a fan of you. <laughs> what is the question like? So, in a field, what are your sitting mean, means in an open field? Can you can you repeat that question, please? Sorry. In an open field, what are your camera settings? On an open field, so you you mean if I want to shoot like a landscape photograph, right? Yeah, in daylight, yeah. I think. Yeah. Yeah, in light daylight. Um, I think I repeat myself on that. Um, in terms of that, everything is on manual, and manual means that situations are never the same. So you go out, and sometimes it's a sunny day, and it's a rainy day, and then it is a cloudy day. Um, it's not easy to really find a general uh, setting for your camera in that case. However, I think it's the shoes of your camera lens that you use. Trying to use a wide angle lens to get a lot of landscape into your frame and maybe use a um, tripod to keep your camera steady. Take your time. Wait for the right moment so that the sun stand is right, that the right cloud is in the picture, for instance, and you have time and you position everything nicely and carefully. And then you have your wide angle lens. It's a lot of in within your frame. And try to work on a very high aperture, which means that your aperture is really close. Aperture number, sorry. So something like 16 or even 21-ish, 22, sorry, so that the aperture, so that the foreground and the background is all very much the same sharpness and you, yeah. lose, you have to lose a lot of depth of field. Actually, the other way around, you gain a lot of depth of field. So yeah, we'll be getting greater depth of field. Yeah, greater depth of field from, mm -hmm. from your camera onwards until the background, everything is in focus. And I yeah. think that's very important. And due to that you close the aperture, you therefore have to extend your shutter speed. So this is why a tripod is also very important to keep your camera steady. Is that helpful? So my next. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Priya. Yeah. yeah. So my next question is that uh, I love photography. So what 
do you love the most in photography? That I can keep my memories in pictures. That I have access to worlds that I wouldn't have without being a photographer. I think I mentioned that before. Um, and being creative, getting getting shots in and be happy about what I'm capable of doing. So it's it's pure love, it's passion. It's it's a very good question, but not easy to answer because we love it and this is why we do it. And and this is uh, something related with our passions also. Like it comes comes out from our passion. So that is a very big thing. Here. Yeah, no. <laughs> direct from here. <laughs> direct from here. Yeah. So now I don't use my eyes. Uh, I use my heart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just some of the uh, some of her clicks also. So she is very much passionate into uh, nature related photography and landscape. Uh -huh. Nice. Oh, that's a beautiful one. You know, I look at it and it, I'm I'm yeah. getting warm. How nice is that? <laughs> Even the color tone, the vibes. Very, very really good. Nice. Very nice framing. And you, you got the sun right. By the way, whenever someone takes pictures of the sun, it's always good to have a line or wall or a tree or something half covering it because otherwise you're not going to get the shape of the sun right. So there, you did a very good job on that. Very nice. Thank you, sir. Then this is the next one. You're obsessed with the sky, huh? Yeah. <laughs> very nice. It's also very good to, again, um, we had that before, um, setting the exposure right for the sky gives you a nice um, contrast to the environment that you're within. Like here, you see the rooftop, but you don't really see much of it, but you can still feel that there's a house nearby, and it makes it very dramatic. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you so much, Priya. Thank you very much, Priya. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, Felix, uh, I think we should continue with uh, some of your works. Then uh, there are some of my uh, senior students also from uh, different media, media colleges. So they will also interact with you. Mm -hmm. So we are in the, uh, like, <clears throat> sailing photography area, right? So those are some of your behind the scenes. Yeah, this is not behind uh -huh. the scene. This is very much in the scene, huh? <laughs> okay. Yes. Yes. You are and, in the scene. Yeah. And again, <laughs> my big smile is there, girl. Huh? You see, yeah. I, I love my job. <laughs> <laughs> our job. Our job. It's our true, job. True. True. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, obviously, this is a very interesting frame, and I think uh, you are going to share some of your experience for this particular photograph also. Um, yeah, this is a very good memory. This is about a year ago when I when those shots were taken um, time is flying apparently uh, I had the chance to be on top of those power how would you call what how would you call them power stations power engine. stations okay yeah you know what that is so I think in, the, in the one of the other pictures you see it better I can I can maybe google it um, to make that clear so it's like wind wind energy this windmill Hmm? Windmill, yeah, it's sort of a windmill. Ah, right? Yeah, okay. I would say so. So it's a windmill for sure. And he's an engineer. Um, and I took this picture for a client of mine um, that is in Hamburg, north of Germany. And I was so excited. You know, this is more than forty meters up in the sky. In the in the sky. Oh, um, and there's hardly any space to move. You're just secured mm -hmm. by these leeches attached to the top of um, this meal. Um, and I was a bit scared before going up there. But as soon as I was there, I loved it. Um, and I worked with a 1635 lens. And sometimes it's really nice to work with a wide angle lens when you have the front glass curved. Because yeah, especially for this kind of situation. Yeah, you have a lot of yeah. you get a lot of in for your picture, which is important. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's not really about him; it's about the environment again. Absolutely. But you get some flare in as well, and you have mm -hmm. a bit of a gradient within the sky. And it's a, it, I don't know, the day was just perfect. It was sunny. It was cloudy. It was not too windy. Um, I don't know. It was a dream job. 
this is one of those jobs where I realized it's it's I'm proud to be a photographer, hundred we'll percent. So this is uh, another point of view of the same same uh, shot, right? Yeah, similar with shot. A wider, wider, wide angle, yeah. and I. To be honest with you, I wasn't even allowed to go where I was there. You see these. Okay. It's in the middle. This is therefore mm -hmm. to secure yourself, and I was unsecured. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> this is uh, a bit of a risky game sometimes. Um, but I was still safe. It was not a windy day. Um, I was all cool. I got permission to do that. So just to make that clear. So don't mm -hmm. don't do it yourself. I was got permission. It was fine. And I had someone nearby me who allowed me to step over this um, one line. But uh, this is obviously a very wide angle shot, 60 millimeters. You see a little bit of the dimension of how small the person is compared to this massive yeah. scene. Mm -hmm. But uh, shooting wide angle is uh, also great sometimes because you see so much of the on this on the sky and uh, the landscape. And as like I said, it was from really <laughs> up high. Good job. And also now we are going to see some behind the scenes of that particular photographer. Right? Yeah, I was able to take a smile with my big smile again. And, yeah. It's <laughs> great. Yeah. So you see in the background, maybe you can point that on. So yeah. in the background, you see some others of these windmills. So for people to... Yeah, this one. Yeah. So this mm -hmm. is, this is um, where I was at. Okay. And this is same. Yeah. same that's same that's again a pouch tray. Yeah, lighting was nice. There was there was so easy. I didn't have any equipment with me apart from from one lens, one camera to keep. And it's very difficult to carry different kinds of equipments here in this particular situation also. This is why I only had a camera and one lens. Uh -huh. I didn't change lenses. 60 16 to 35 mil gave me some some playground to go from wide angle to a little bit closer. Mm -hmm. um, but that was for a reason, also for security reason. Sure. Really nice. Now uh, let's uh, come to the food photography aspects. Like you have covered lots of uh, food photographs also in different kinds of festival as well as some commercial shoots. So uh, do you want to give some uh, tips to the budding uh, food photographers, those who are interested in food photography? Yeah, 100%. Um, the good thing with food is there's no rules. This is what I uh -huh. experienced. Um, uh, it's important to take some time but don't overthink your shoot. Um, all these dishes that you maybe see in my photographs are very authentic and ready to eat. You know, yeah. obviously we all know about these fake campaigns from some fast food chains of where they fake the tomatoes and put some glue in. No, mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of authentic photographs. And um, this is exactly what my, my food photographer shows as well and what I, recommend to do so to everyone who is interested in that field it's always good to have a small reflector with you and a tripod mm -hmm. um, to get um, everything nicely and a live view live view is very important as well because you have you see the image you see this sort of frame that you take but you can still move a few things and try to fill fully frame and fully fill in your frame with mm -hmm. uh, some, you can some add on some elements also. Yeah. yeah. So don't mm -hmm. rush. Food photography doesn't work with a handheld camera and you just jump in and take pictures, you're out. Mm -hmm. It is staged. It takes some time. Have your tripod handy and ready. Have your camera there. Have a live view. Try to arrange things nicely. And then you wait for the moment, get some sun in, maybe have a bit of a reflector so that you can mm -hmm. point on something. And um, to be honest, editing is a bit of important as well because yeah. to get colors right, this is something I would recommend to do in Photoshop afterwards. Mm -hmm. So uh, what kind of lenses do you uh, recommend for food photography? I, it's always my, I think this is again my 2470. So it's, okay. you know, apart from my sailing, most of my shots is taken on a 24-70 or a 35 when it comes to reportages. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, 70 mil, 50 mil, everything is fine. It's it's good to have a bit of depth of field here. You see, like, yeah. the, the, the foreground is... Uh, this is the foreground area. The, 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 the focus yeah. is on the product. Um, mm -hmm. This is what I mean. It's always good to 
uh, full frame the whole thing a little mm -hmm. bit. Um, and uh, here, ProTrace is also food. Try to communicate again, have the focus on the person, uh, let someone facing something towards you so that there is some, some three-dimensional depth in the picture. Mm -hmm. Well, we all know that this is a drink. The same here. This time, again, we remember this shot of this yeah. little boy. Yeah? So this is another mm -hmm. shot where my own hand is part of the picture um, to present the view through someone's eyes. So, so there's something, again, try out when you take these pictures. Focus on the bottles here because this is what the product is about. But yeah. it's about authentically an authentic situation. And I hope this is um, clear or comes clear when you look at this picture. Mm. Again, but, uh, this is a very interesting perspective. Right? Yeah, I light on the floor and I asked them mm. to lean over me <laughs> and celebrate. They just won an award and they were dancing and being absolutely happy. And I said, okay, mm. I lay down. And I was very fortunate because it was a rather cloudy day. So it was not sunny. Yeah, otherwise, otherwise it will be difficult. Yeah. yeah, it's very difficult. And it was very, mm. very, like, I remember Kolkata as a very, uh, yeah, cloudy environment, foggy even. And mm -hmm. uh, this was a similar day. So there is still light, but not too mm -hmm. much light. And it was easy to focus on the faces and get a nice shot in. Yeah, it's good fun. Yeah. And what about this one? This is related with some, some festivals? Yeah, it's a festival. Um, okay. I think it's also a food festival. Um, yeah, the, all the pictures you show here is a lot of food. But it's also mm -hmm. a bit of architectural um, content to it. And I think, again, it's very important. When you shoot on something on these festivals, and for instance, it's mm -hmm. about food, get your food photography in uh, from, from the dish itself. Mm -hmm get some faces in but again some wide angle and also you want well. to show the ambience yeah. yeah absolutely yeah. so that is very useful for any like uh, photo journalistic aspects of photography suppose uh, you are documenting that particular uh, photograph for uh, for any kind of magazines or for any kind of newspapers those kind of varieties are very important right 100% absolutely mm -hmm. right get better better take more pictures than you need yeah uh, and select them uh, when you do your edits. Uh, mm -hmm. This is the big advantage of living in the digital area. Whereas when you were an yeah. analog photographer, you were still supposed to do the same, but uh, you didn't have the freedom of taking um, too many pictures and getting the mm -hmm. shot in that you were after. And this one, this one is a quite interesting uh, photograph. So could you uh, explain the techniques uh, behind this? So is let, it let me, how, many, how many, how many, yes, yeah, it's, it's definitely the same person. Let me just count on how many cyclists there are. One, two, three, four, five, seven. Six, seven. So I think this pretty much represents, uh, no, I think my camera is capable to do more than seven uh, frames in a second, but it's um, pretty much what the story is all about. So I was on this fair um, and it was about bikes. And I wanted to present this bike in a little bit special way. And obviously, it's sports photography, so we can show action. And how do we show action? By showing a nice trick. And um, to make this trick look more interesting, I decided on um, mm -hmm. editing all frames and layering all frames together in one shot. And this happened. And the, yeah, how did I do it? Um, I sat down on the floor so i was rather okay. stable i tried to balance i put my actually my elbows against my chest so i had a bit mm -hmm. of a tripod situation here um, i presetted the focus on this little ramp so that when i do my editing afterwards i know that the focus is not moving because if i have mm -hmm. done it then maybe the camera finds the focus on the bike but the bike moves so sometimes the focus in the background sometimes in the foreground so i set that on manual and when the cyclist came closer, I just did my seven, eight, nine frames per second. Like, and that's yeah. it. And then I layered all the <clears throat> together on Photoshop and um, brushed. Then you have marched all those pictures, right? Yeah. 100%. Yeah, I think you did a tutorial on that beforehand, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I just, mm -hmm. well, yeah, this is how it happened. Exactly the right. same with the uh, picture that comes after. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, those are some sports sports events right yeah some Racing. drifting some drifting some sports okay some, some okay. action shots for those who like cars okay mm -hmm. Really nice. So this is some fair again. So this is an expo mm -hmm. um, for for aeroplanes. Um, and again, I don't know these people. And okay. my assignment was uh, get some some potential customer in the picture and just let them pretend to buy this aeroplane, for instance. They're not models. They're normal people. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know where they're from. I think they were from Australia or so. Um, and I asked them and spoke to them. I said. Oh, uh, would you mind to become part of my picture? I'd like you to, um, yeah, just test a few things out and be happy. And they all knew each other. They were friends. And mm -hmm. like you see, um, I'm, again, very, very close, even though I don't yeah. know. So it's always good when you do these jobs, have a shower beforehand, <laughs> uh, yeah, wear a fresh shirt, because when you want to get your shot in, come close. And this is exactly mm -hmm. what happened there. I was not afraid to come closer to someone that I don't know. And I think mm -hmm. the world still feeling very comfortable with that. And that's the other shot that I meant. Yeah, this is this is and this one is crazy. Now you see the like, same oh, technique. Yeah. The same technique. Um, and this is somehow presents wow. how many pictures uh, my camera is capable to take within one second. Okay. <laughs> so it's uh, uh, how many frames? I don't so know. The how maximum many FPS? No, okay. So maybe this is pro I think this is overall like two More seconds. Than the, three seconds. Wow. Mm -hmm. But this is Great. it's pretty stunning, I think. Mm -hmm. um, so good. yeah, this is again. You see, it's about a product handed over to a person. What I do, especially with kids, I don't. I'm mm -hmm. not afraid of kids. I come close, so you have something in the foreground. The shoulder even covers a little bit of the right hand corner. The focus again is on the person who is the main part of the image, and therefore there is communication happening. And we all know like what the person in the picture is about to do, and she's handing something over to the kid as a little gift or as a present. Great. And uh, I just uh, want to ask uh, one more thing: so Do we, for this kind of event, do you use any kind of external flash? No. Okay. I'm very, very lucky with this um, hole because there's some natural light coming through. But mm -hmm. obviously, sometimes I need. I've got, I've got flash guns, and on some of my jobs, yes, I have external lights. Um, but I'm, I, I love to work with natural lights, and this is just my sort of photography that I prefer using. Okay. So, and obviously you use prime lens, right, for low light situation. Uh, the thirty-four, the thirty-five, but I think two point eight on the twenty-four seventy is still very decent. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not afraid to raise my eyes out to up to two thousand. I'm I'm very good with that. I think it's amazing what digital cameras are capable of doing. Capable of, yeah, nowadays. that's very very good. Even uh. Uh, is this for uh, any shot of magazines or some editorial? Uh, yeah, that would no, for not for magazines, but for newspapers. It's uh, all okay. very well known um, German politicians. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But again, so this is a rather the reason why I gave those I gave those pictures to you is because the environment where these were shot yeah. in are rather boring. So what mm -hmm. can I do to make things look better by finding a different angle so when you look at the previous mm -hmm. image for instance yeah yeah this is was absolutely absolutely nice boring, but he is he is a politician and mm -hmm. so i decided on putting something in front of my camera i think this is a stool mm -hmm. uh, like a chair and um there were some holes in it and um it covered most of the boring room but it shows him clearly and with the next one so he speaks to the audience and i mm -hmm. come from a little bit lower to look straight into his eyes, but he looks above me. So you see that he's communicating with the crowd behind me, mm -hmm. but I still show the meaningful face that he's presenting into the camera somehow. So it's again about perspectives and framing and yeah. Great, even this one also I can see a very nice. So very reflection. boring, very boring room. But the yeah. surface of the table that she sits on is shining. Mm -hmm. So I put my camera low, like my lens 
actually touches the surface as well uh, because it's shining um it it come somehow extends the image and makes it to something interesting okay <clears throat> the same 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 thing uh, someone yeah. talks to someone else so it's mm -hmm. important that you give a hint of the person that the person Absolutely speaks to mm -hmm. so communication very important yeah and what about this this one lockdown london <laughs> we are going to see some more pictures on these yeah. topics also later on yeah we will we Great. will yeah this is uh, london at the moment i don't know did you you listeners um i don't know whether you've been to london in your lifetime yet or you going to or i don't know but uh this is not the normal london the normal mm -hmm. london is very much like the normal Kolkata of where there are like people everywhere. Howdy, right? In this mm -hmm. area, this is one of the most uh, um, well-known places in London. Usually there's like millions of tourists from Europe and all over the world even going for shopping. And then there's an underground station and mm -hmm. you see people like nonstop coming out there like, like a snake out of a hole, you know, like like this and this is what happens over there and now there's nothing it's quiet there's a bus but there's no people on the bus true to be fair this shot oh. taken like the other one that comes now is also that was taken like uh some weeks ago so the situation is a little bit better by now but um still very very locked up So this one is also part of a lockdown city, right? It's also part of lockdown city. Like um, you were, now you can do more than one exercise per day, but this was the first uh -huh. uh, regulation, only one exercise per day. And you see this old bridge in the background and this is near where I live. And it's a rather nice area to be honest with you. And those, uh -huh. this path walk is there for, I don't know how many years. And all of a sudden they made those artificial modern lines on the floor saying keep two meters apart so i tried to put this was for a magazine as well or like for a newspaper and i wanted um to present these two meters somehow so it was very lucky and i was waiting there for like five minutes or so until one cyclist and one runner came and you see by doing the measurements one is just over the line that is closest to ours and the cyclist is just in front of the line of above where it says keep two meters you know what i mean so there is these two meter uh difference uh, apart from uh from them each other so this is what the photograph is about to show mm -hmm. okay let's uh, move on to the next one this one this is i think also part of this lockdown cities mm -hmm. it's also lockdown cities here in the uk there's a lot of support towards uh, the medical system the national health system um and then there was at some day there it was called the v day it was the victory mm -hmm. day um so it was when the world war ii ended in 1945 so long time ago but still very important day here in the UK that is celebrated usually with big as street parties and road parties. Um, so people, even though the parties were not permitted, um, there were quite a few flags uh, out there um, showing some pride. And I just took my camera and my bike, cycled through the city. It was a lovely sunny day. And I think this picture has some power in it. Yeah. I can see the power of this particular photograph also through this a very interesting uh, foreground, very interesting background as well. So uh, what about this one, the same series? This is the famous Buckingham Palace. This is where the mm -hmm. queen lives, the queen of England lives. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, probably some of you will recognize it. And you have to imagine in front of Buckingham Palace, there is so many people in normal times. Tourists mm -hmm. with their phones, with their selfie sticks, with their cameras, everyone wants to have a picture taken. There's one person, I think, and I yeah, can't get rid of it. 
pause. Sorry. But other than yeah. that, it's it's completely empty. Something that is just for my memory. All the whole story is about memories. Mm -hmm. And what about this one? This is a very quite interesting frame. So all the photographers are just behind this uh, sports uh, woman, right? So, and your your uh, situation was just opposite. So all the photographers are on on the right hand side, and you are on the left hand side of the frame. So what's the story behind it? What is the story behind it? So yeah, I, I don't know whether I pronounce your name correctly, Koskai. She is an um, a runner, an African runner, mm -hmm. um, and she won the London Marathon last year. Very amazing. Can you imagine you running a marathon and she crossed the finish line and there was not even one drop of sweat? She was like normal, like, wow. Anyways, that's not the, what the story is about. Mm -hmm. Very impressive anyways. But um, I, what I like to show with this photograph is, and I think this is very important for all of you out there, being a photographer means that you're not supposed to follow the crowd. It is important that you have somehow now um, your own idea, especially as you work as a photojournalist. As a press photographer, there's somehow yeah. a difference. A press photographer takes a shot, and it's about this person crossing the finish line. And the press photographer wants to send the picture out immediately, so it's been published in the next issue a couple of hours later on. As a photojournalist, you have a little bit more freedom of how you plan your photography. And this is uh -huh. exactly what I did here. I didn't have the pressure. For me, it was about a story again. So I tried to find a slightly different angle to everyone else. And I was just shouting at her very nicely, of course, like, yay, well done. <laughs> um, can you have? Can you look towards me? And she did. And you can see her eyes, can you? Yeah. And she's facing. Let me zoom in. Yeah. She's looking straight into my camera. And she turned over mm -hmm. um, and she's looking at me. So this is my picture. No one else has this picture. There was no one next to me. And all the That's other it. photographers in the background have someone showing, facing the back. So this is, back, um, back. Yeah. This is sometimes photography is all about finding your angle and um, wait for the shot and try to get the shot in and be a little bit pushy. Don't be rude. Don't push anyone to the side and say, I want to get this shot and I want to get this shot. Be kind, but try to think in advance and try to frame your picture even before it's taken. And I think this is another example of it. And one more thing is you have to think differently, right? Think out of the box. Out of the box. <laughs> that's, that's the number one phrase. Huh? Think out of the box. Yeah really nice really nice so uh, this is also a sports event i think yeah so this is two german um, marathon runners and this is a project mm -hmm. that i work on for three days now uh, three years now already and the guy on the right hand side he's blind okay um, the tall one no sorry the other one so uh, not, this not one left, left one? no this one is the guide runner and okay. that one yeah so this one he is blind Mm -hmm. And the one with the beard, he is his uh, guide runner. So you see the little leech in between them. Can yeah. you see it? So this is how they run a marathon. And this is a very exciting story to cover, actually, because they do very, mm -hmm. very well. Um, it's a very strong bounding between them, even a friendship. And I've been uh, following them for some time already. And I think it's very impressive that sports doesn't have any boundaries and when sports and uh, when it's about no boundaries then i'm very happy to join and take pictures of it because this is worth a storytelling great so uh, this is your instagram page so uh, guys uh, please uh, do visit his in instagram I need page more followers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we also like uh, we are very much interested to uh, see some of your stories also so thank you so much, uh, Felix, for giving us uh, this amount of time. And uh, we are going to the last uh, segment of this particular live session, which is the interaction, right? So with us, right now with us, uh, we have some of my students from uh, different uh, media colleges. So first, and one of my friends also. So let me uh, 
introduce one of my friend first, uh, Rakshanda. Rakshanda, uh, could you please introduce yourself? Hello. Hello. Rakshanda. I'm, I was an ex-student of iLead itself, but uh, I did not pursue photography. I discovered my passion for photography around 1.5 years back. Okay. So since then, I have been trying to learn photography on my own. And now I do have a DSLR, so I try experimenting different shots and etc. But I'm more inclined towards wildlife photography, wildlife and nature photography. So uh, I like I had heard like I listened to your entire conversation with Shubham and different exper uh, experiences that you have shared. <laughs> so you. I have a few questions. Uh, first of all, the question is like, what is the advice that you would give to a person who is learning photography by himself or herself? Like, for example, me, because I don't, I have not undergone a proper professional training as such. And I think this is uh, this is good. I think this is uh, nothing to worry about at all. Um, but I I feel it's worth maybe spending some Monday on a good book. I think there are quite a few good books um, that you can trust mm -hmm. and faith. Um, I think it's worth understanding photography, at least the basic and and the techniques of photography, so that you have a well understanding, a uh, good understanding of how some things belong together. You know what I mean? So the, yeah. the, the, the about triangle. The, the triangle. The triangle. Yes. Um, because. Um, yes, you can do and fix so much in your editing afterwards, but I think it gives you more self-confidence if you have a good feeling of that everything is set up correctly. And the yeah. better your feeling about these things is, the more stronger you go into your jobs and into your assignments or into your story. Mm -hmm. um, other than that, yes, do a little bit of YouTubing um listen to some photographers who are happy to share their experience um talk to mm -hmm. me like you do here already um yes, drop me an email sure. send me send me an uh, instagram message or anything like that mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. ask your questions but i think overall it's all about training but when it comes to investments yeah. of um, photography gear it's always uh, worth asking for another opinion because there's so much on the market at the moment and price is vary mm -hmm. from from very high to very low. And I think it's really depends on what your photography is about. And when you say you do white life mostly, it's not worth buying a wide, wide angle lens. It's more important that you go for a zoom lens, for instance. Yeah. Um, so currently so, I'm using Nikon D5600 with uh, yeah. one is a zoom lens and one is 1855. Yeah, so this is the kit. Yeah. So, yeah. but again, again, there. So sometimes you maybe feel that you have a, the 1855 for some basic photography, but when you want to do your wildlife, you maybe are happy to spend some money on a on a better lens at some point. But when it comes mm -hmm. to this decision making, speak to someone who has some experience with it. Uh, mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to ask. It's really good to to get some opinions. But I think training is the most important thing and uh, some reading out of some decent books is also very good advice that I can give you because there's also a lot of misleading information out there when you do your internet research and a book right. that's there for a long time, especially when it's about analog photography, you can know, mm -hmm. you know that you can trust it because it's, it's still the same. I hope this right. helped you a little bit. <laughs> yes, it does. <laughs> it just boosts my confidence. Great, great yeah. question. But and keep, keep secondly, working on it. Um, sorry? No, just keep keep pushing it and try things out. And you, it's yeah, that's what I've been trying to do so far. You can, you can learn and um, yeah. you do very well on that, I'm pretty sure. Yes. And secondly, where do you sell your pictures? Like you sell the pictures, so on which platform do you sell them? Um, I don't sell any pictures on any platforms, to be honest. Um, mm -hmm. You can, you can. Um, so obviously, I do a lot of commissioned work. So I've got my clients um, who email mm -hmm. me and say, "Felix, there's a job," or I email to a client and said, "Hey, I would like to collaborate with you." 
um, when it comes to picture selling, um, it's people that I give my number to or my email address. You can find my email address on, on my website, for instance, and you can easily okay. write an email to me and say, Felix, I would like to buy a picture of you. And uh, then I give you a price list and then I can can sell a picture to you. In but order to get there, I should have a good portfolio, right? <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah. Um, and But I, I think start with, when you would like to sell your pictures, start within your family and then some friends and then you speak to some other people and depends on what sort of photography you do. Because my photography is not really about art and I don't go out and shoot and hope that someone buys my pictures of it. I work as a full-time photographer, which means that I'm commissioned to do my work. So when I sell a picture, I don't do it through any platform because those pictures are not produced to be sold in first place, if that makes sense. Uh, but for you, yes. um, have some prints ready, have a nice portfolio ready um, and speak to friends and maybe offer something on, on Instagram saying, here, this is my, my photographs. And if you would like to buy a print of yeah, me, uh, give me, give me a PM. And I think this is the way it mm -hmm. works. I, I don't feel but it's, it's idea. very difficult here in India. Like, if you are planning Actually, to sell yeah. your photographs, uh, no one is going to buy uh, that particular photographs. Even if you talk about books, also nowadays we are more mostly interested in ebooks rather than selling e any kind right. of hard copy, like buying any kind of hard copies. So, okay, yeah, that's, that's this, is, this that's is the current uh, scenario right now. That's a different market, and I'm sorry mm -hmm. to hear that. I didn't know. But yeah, uh, like I, I want to, maybe, I maybe, want maybe to try to go against the mainstream and still <laughs> try to sell it. Print it. Why don't right. you, Why don't you print it first and then mm -hmm. print it and have a print and it's Small not postcards like, or like, like greetings like cards. Calendars, you mean like photo yeah, calendars? calendars? Calendars, mm -hmm. postcards. I've got a good friend. He's a he works as an assistant um, with very good photographers. <laughs> Uh, worldwide even and he is a photographer himself as well but he doesn't do he does more assisting and he started a, a photo project during lockdown and he photographed birds birds that were in his garden um, and he made these beautiful postcards of it and he said okay pm me um, and i sent you postcards it's seven pounds i don't know how many rupees that is doesn't really matter, but not much. Is approximately six fifty rupees. Yeah. So it's not it's not a lot of money. It's it's still okay, I feel. And he said um, you get like seven postcards for it, and he he printed them. So because it's printed, you cannot put them back to digital. And I think that's that's the right. idea. Because when I when I sell pictures, then I can obviously send like a digital file to someone. But soon as something is already printed, then you're supposed to sell the print. Which means that you have to calculate slightly different because obviously you have to spend some money on your own to make these prints, good quality prints. That's very important, and then you can send it out. And the distribution but, channel. Yeah. So um, try to go against the mainstream. I'm pretty sure um, that you find someone who is happy to buy your prints and never put your prices too low. It's the same with being commissioned. If you want to show someone that you're the very best photographer in the world. Just like that, it doesn't. It doesn't, it doesn't then, then show them because you put your high prices high. If you start low, they will never pay you more. And right. becoming a professional photographer means that you have to live from it. You've got your partner, right. you've got your children, you've got your flat. You have to pay your rent. You have to pay your bread. You have to pay your butter. You have to pay whatever. So you need to make some income in it. And you're an artist. Someone who paints a painting makes. A million of money. Why doesn't do a photographer mix at least right. similar money? And I think it's the same when you speak about your your prints. If you want to offer quality, then sell it as quality. And there's pretty much some businessman who is happy to have one of your nice prints in in your house and uh, try to catch them. Email them. Say hello. Whatever. Yeah. Right. Right. So. Uh, Let's see some of our Thank tips so also. Much. Those are really nice. Uh, uh, can you see? Wow. Is it visible? Yeah. That's that's a perfect postcard, isn't it? Yeah. So 
Thank you. I wonder, when, when do I get a postcard from you then? <laughs> Whenever you want. <laughs> as soon as the lockdown eases and the printing firms, like, you know, they started, they work again. My business is handset. Very powerful. See the, ah, uh, there we go with your light life. Nice. Can I say one thing? Sure, I'm, not a, I'm not a big fan of uh, watermarks. So mm -hmm. I saw this in the previous one. So there's yeah, your yeah, there. that's, that's uh, the and, and when you put that on Instagram, of mine. I, know, I know, I know I can, I do understand, but mm -hmm. um, people often say, Felix, why don't you do it? And I say, because I don't like it. It's, um, okay. it, it, you know, it's disturbing. It's such a beautiful picture and the way you present it, obviously it makes mm -hmm. sense that there's the water column, like watermark. Mm -hmm. um, but especially when you do like presentations and stuff, it's always good to take them off. Mm -hmm. This is, it has nothing to do with the actual picture, you know? It's just- Right, 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 I get it. it. it I, I love it. Look at this nice framing. You've got the eyes nicely clear and then the ears and the mouth is covered by, by some leaves in the foreground. That's very good. Yeah, it, it's the cage actually. This photo is taken in the zoo. Oh, I see. Yeah. I, I wouldn't know. That's that's another good thing. Sometimes it's good not mm -hmm. to know where you take those pictures from, right colors, yeah. Yeah, that's it. Nice. Yeah, yeah especially the first three ones are very, very um, nice. And I like that you, of course, you've got two black and whites here, but um, the first with the sunset and um, then the lion, um, yeah, very good. Postcard. Thank yeah, you. She has, she she has lots of uh, pictures uh, in the field of wildlife. So it's very difficult to choose five of them. So I think, uh, uh, Rakshanda, you can like share your Instagram ID so that we can see some of your uh, Sure, sure, also. sure. Yeah? Sure. Yes. Very good work. And wildlife is, is good. I think you, you already know how to photograph. So. Yeah, so, it's been like I've been training myself for now more than a year. So, like working, working, working. So it's been one year since I purchased the camera. So I've been trying to get a hands-on experience directly, like experimenting with different exposures, ISO, and you know all of it. Very good. So I try getting which one. Everyone, everyone who's yes. listening and watching. Because should... this was not the quality of the pictures which I used to click a year ago. It was like. It was not, I won't say it was bad, but the quality of pictures which I click now, like this, these pictures, the lion and the bird, is just like around. Um, you, saw me, you saw me playing cricket, huh? You should see me now. I'm, I'm very good. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, there's a lot of improvement. But this is exactly what it's all about. Like, you found this is uh, totally self taught. Yeah. So, that is very yes. commendable, right? Okay. Thank you very much for joining Thank us. You so Thank, much. You so much. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much. So next, I'm going to introduce uh, Shomo Dipta. So Shomo Dipta is a very passionate uh, uh, travel photographer and street photographer. So uh, could you please introduce yourself? So my name is uh, Shomo Dipta Roy, and uh, I'm recently go just going to join ILIT. So nice. yeah, I congratulations. Really, uh, <laughs> I really like to do photography, and it's it's about two years ago that I started photography from. And I really, I kind of, it's my perspective that I don't like to click photos with mobile phones. Like nowadays, it's a competition that uh, they have 40, 48 megapixels and all. I don't like to do that, like for clicking pictures with the mobile, because I think it's a profession. It's a great profession. So I really like to do photography with the perfect DSLR, with the great lenses that we guys uh, see everywhere. And so I, I mainly I am a portrait photographer, and I also like to do streets. And uh, and now I really confused about just to click the street stories that are really we came to see in every second, the street story. So yeah, I would like to know about more more street stories that like you have ever covered with and all. Mm. Great. Uh, do you have any queries? Yeah, like any street stories that you ever clicked, 
like okay. clicking a photo and uh, with that uh, a story just came up and all that hmm. oh i don't know to be very honest so are you, you talking about the visual storytelling aspect of photograph yeah it's yeah kind of um maybe uh, like what do you like uh, to tell a story from a photograph or to show whatever in that photograph is so like, i i love i love i love storytelling that's yeah. that's a thing uh, very that it's a i think um you should i think it doesn't really matter what photographs you're taking i think having some sort of a story and in the content is really nice having so even if you only go out to take one portrait, it's good to show where the portrait was taken. And um, I'm not like the biggest street photographer. I've done that, and I think street photographs is the best I, training, the best training for any sort of photographs, because you can create your own stories. Like uh, lockdown, for instance, that's a bit of street photography that I do at the moment. Um, you can can take pictures of people having smoking a cigarette or um, going out and go dance and people singing and people who are doing some some music on the streets. So, but what you do there, you take a portrait, you take some some environmental picture, and you take um, a, yeah something in between, showing what sort of music they're playing, um, still with a face in it. Um, the good thing about street photography is that there's hardly any rules as long as you respect uh, the people that you photograph, um, that you don't mess around with them, and that you're fair. And um, also it just supports you to gain some self-confidence uh, when you speak to people that you don't know. You know, you can I kindly ask people, and this is something you can later on use for your work as a professional photographer because this is so so important i think we discussed that a couple of times of how important communication is even though you don't speak the same language um so i don't know i can't really help you with stories that i i like in 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 the terms of street photography because this should be that's something i leave with you um but Storytelling, even when you go out for, like I repeat myself here, even you, if you just want to go out for one portrait, so keep so having a story in mind. You're a photojournalist, uh, and when you just click a, like you're clicking a photo of a, like a great uh, actor or actress or any kind of politician, yeah. uh, like I have seen your pictures right away in the Instagram. You, you like to click the photos in a different perspective, and that is really good. Thank you very much. And I think this is also important for everyone because yeah. you, when you have time, use the time. You know, when it's about a politician, you sometimes have only 10 minutes with them, maybe five minutes. Five minutes is, is, uh, yeah, seems to be a long time, but it is not a long time because you have to have everything right. You want the person looking nice. You want the window nearby so that some lights come through. Then it's like super dark. It's It's messy you know it's not tidy up so you have to tidy up and everything within five minutes five minutes not a long time but i swear to you and within those five minutes you can take more than two pictures and try to get three pictures in one is the portrait one is the person sitting on the desk and the last picture is when you on your way out you're already within like standing inside the the door frame about to leave the room you just yeah. turn down and take the last shot and then you have a wide angle shot you have three three pictures and you can do that in three minutes and this is exactly what i recommend to everyone when you do street take your time and try to get your three different angles in because out of these three different angles you can choose the one that is best to represent the story it shows whether you like the politician or not it shows whether you like the actors or not because this is your voice and you can use your voice wisely that's good that so let nice. me share uh, some of his clicks so as you can see in the screen and it has been captured by shomo do i know this bridge i think i do huh? yeah this one this yeah. is uh where what is this is it? this is fairy heart i don't yeah, know shomo it's so huh? I think I fairy heart. Yeah. yeah i've been there i think yeah interesting um where you put your focus mm -hmm. 
because it's on the person but you look into sort of a tunnel yeah. even though it's a bridge i know but this is like the tunnel view and the background is blurry and the focus is not central it's completely off that's that's mm -hmm. i like it's very risky but it's interesting yeah. of, of, absolutely interesting yeah so you have come to kolkata it's uh, it's our it's our one of the biggest festivals it's durga ma that we worship every year for five days it's like uh, so nice nice making, nice. Of, that, uh, making of that set it's a it's a photo in gangtok mm. and singing for example that's that's a good shot um but you're not close enough yeah i was can I, can I can i be it's okay when i when i say that huh it's yeah. it's, it's nice because yeah, yeah, there's, so many, there's a lot of storytelling like who's mm -hmm. capable of carrying so many water bottles yeah. um but i don't i don't see any pain in his face yeah. because it doesn't matter how strong he is even the strongest person in the world will have some pain when he carries a hundred water bottles because it's a hundred worth a hundred kilograms of water i couldn't do it when i do this for a long time i would like i would look like this and i want to see it and you can only see it when you come close because the legs is not important it is his face but it's still important that you see what you carry so this is for instance one thing where communication is important that you come in close But nice. It's it's still a very good picture, hundred percent. This is closer. This is better. Mm -hmm. But um, why? But this is you did a little bit of editing there, huh? Yeah. It's, yeah, I think selective editing. Yeah. It's it's the main thing that he like sells every day. Um. So I'm just defining that. Yeah. With the edit. I I like the shot. But I would leave it in total black and white. And this is, I think we, we um, yeah, it's just an edit. Well, that's that's a very good one. This is again like the first one. Thing. You you, you mm. know how to put your focus, and this is what it's great because there's something in the foreground. An automatic camera like your phone would fo choose the focus in the foreground instead, but you define the focus yourself. You put set it on the person there. And it's amazing that this little crossing goes to someone's head and it frames automatically the person who's sitting. So this is really good. That's that's a great shot. Also in black and white, that works really nicely. Yes, thank you. Well done. Thank you, sir. I think that's it. Yeah. So thank you so much, Omo. Thank you very much. And all the best and say hello to Mr. Chopra. Huh? <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to uh, put uh, Binish. Uh, Binish, could you please introduce yourself? Hello. Hello, Binish. Hello. <laughs> nice to I'm meet you. audible. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, hi, my name is Binish. I'm from ILE, still in first year, and I don't know when I'm going to go to the second year anyway. So, so there are certain questions that I really want to ask. So no. I'll, please, you're very, no, sorry, we, we're listening to you. We, we hear you clearly. Okay. Sorry, I just waited for you to, to uh, complete your sentence. So. <laughs> okay. So since you're a photojournalist, then you must be traveling a lot. So which country has been an eye-opening for you? So sorry again, which country? Has been an eye-opening for you. Uh, India. 100%. And why is it so? Why is it so? Um, probably because it was a very, very warm, welcome country um, with a lot of um, beautiful areas, a lot of new friends that I met there. Um, and it was the journey that, might, that helped me to make the decision of where I want to go with my photography. So it's, it's more about the personal aspect. Um, I'm not a traveler per se in terms of I like to travel, but I don't like 
to travel for personal purposes. It's not that I go somewhere and then be somewhere and I feel like, okay, because I'm in Asia now or in Europe, um, I feel better because I'm here and not elsewhere. Um, but India definitely somehow showed me the route of where I like to go with my photography. This is why it was so important and this is why it was an eye opener. Um, and um, yeah, but sometimes it's, I remember one other journey and this was a train journey that lasts one hour from where I live now to the coast side. And this is why, because there was a very nice, interesting event that I was able to cover. And I stood there for two or three days. So I stayed in a, in a little, little hotel um, for those days. But the journey itself only took an hour to get there. But it was still very nice. And it was a good memory that I've got from there. Um, so it's not about distance and not about culture. It's about the people that I'm surrounded by. Does that help? You're more concentrated to yes, it does. It did actually. You're cool. more concentrated towards photography or sailing. How would you describe it different from the other types of photography that you have done so far? Um maybe visually there's a difference, but the way that I photograph such things is not really different. Obviously, the shutter speeds are way faster when I do sports. So I mentioned that earlier on that um, my shutter speed is sometimes up to one eight thousandth of a second, uh, which is super, super fast. So I don't need such high shutter speeds when I do portraitures. But um, I see sailing as work. I see sailing as sort of labor. You know, there's people who muscles there's there's sport there's activity there's emotion involved but you've got the same when you photograph someone who works in a factory and works there every single day and has to do something to produce and to 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 i don't know to to do something with their fingers on and um, the meaning is pretty much the same. Someone is doing something. There's activity happening. And all I do is I cover and photograph the activity behind the action. So for me, it doesn't really matter whether it's sailing or something else, as long as people are involved in. So I don't really need to change my style in any sense. Okay, I was about to ask you another question, but I guess that covered the first question, that like previous question that I've asked you already. Is that, is that something positive? <laughs> <laughs> yes, oh, like it was. I was about to ask you how difficult it is for you to convey a story in a single frame, but in a way you did describe it. Thank you. So that is a positive thing. That's good. I love positivity. <laughs> so we can see some of our clicks also in your screen so this is the first one nice you are someone who likes to so did you vote anything from the first picture can i can i before I say something, can I see the others first? Yeah, yeah. This one. Hello? Yeah, I'm still here. I just said that I like to see all of them before I, I give you some some point. Are they all taken during the night? Yeah, mostly. Yes. Yeah. This they is this, this is what I wanted. This is amazing because what you do here is there's not a lot of light around. And what you did is trying to find the better lit places and use the little light available to exposure your picture pictures correctly. And um, so it's it's of course about the situation itself, but I think you were capable of finding the right lighting coming through to give your pictures a strong meaning to it. Um, very well done. Thank you. 
it's it's very very good and very heart touching and i think you 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 are very like me you're not afraid of coming close to people you like to be surrounded by people and um this is why i can see in these pictures and there's communication so even the the, the elderly man who is there selling some some good uh, this one here he's looking into your camera and you use the little light of variable very wisely and the framing is nice you're not cropping into this cage which looks it's not a cage i know it's not but it looks a bit like <laughs> a cage it's very nicely framed yeah. there but the, it's it's fully there and yeah it's very nice documentary photography very well done and very nice uh, nice use of storytelling right yeah in in very good really good so thank you so much binish uh, thank you so much so next i'm going to this is i think the last one i'm going to put on kushal so uh, kushal could you please uh, introduce yourself hello hello yeah kushal <clears throat> how are you doing my uh, my name is kushal gag and i am from my lead as well um, i am in first year and uh, since last year only i have started taking photography seriously and i started traveling so uh, when i grow up i want to do travel photography as well as photojournalism a bit of photojournalism that's good love it what photojournalism really tells me is that um, you know um, you don't really have to uh, find the you don't really have to find the beautiful things you, you just have to tell the story like the story is the first uh, first and foremost important thing and then comes the surrealism yeah you have to convey uh, any such kind of stories through your photographs right hmm. <laughs> i can i can only so, agree. yeah because so do you have I, any queries kushal because the story the story is what you define you define the story mm -hmm. it's your yeah. storytelling you're the journalist you would like to to tell your story to the, the public to your viewers to your followers whoever that is yes um and the beauty is something that is given by nature it's given by so many circumstances it's given by things that you don't have the power to change unless you want to stage your photographs apparently if you want to if you want to photograph a fake world then you can't stage things then beauty comes first and then the story but if you work as a photojournalist the story is yours you want to tell the story and then it's the beauty because the beauty is something that you cannot change like you maybe you've seen the whole session here it's um going on for three and a half hours already yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> there's one uh poetry that i shot in the little cabin the cabin yeah, was not nice the cabin mm. was not a beautiful place yeah so it was about the story and yeah. within this little cabin i had to find and i i tell you it was the only possible bit where i was able to put him to still get a nice picture out of it yeah i saw that picture it was really nice thank you so uh, uh, i want to ask you that uh, when did you find your passion for photography um very much in the very beginning of my lifetime um i said that in a, in my introduction i think it was my grandfather who guided me towards photography um but it was later on when i realized that photojournalism and photography in general is something that i would like to do as my profession um because we all know photography is a hard environment to be in it's not easy to make money out of it it's not easy to to make this as your job but you still have the passion and you still have the aim to become a professional photographer making a living out of it um but i only decided on doing that when i had when i felt that i have enough support from my family when i had enough support by people who like my images and i had enough support by the community who judged my photographs like i somehow judge your photographs right now and um, the more self confident i was the more the decision was clear for me to give it a try and uh, uh, is your time on the water thrilling like when you are uh, sailing 
Can you can you repeat that question, please? Like you are mostly shooting uh, in the water, right? Sailing on, and on, on the water. Yeah, I do some the... photo. I, no, 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 no. It's, it's absolutely fine. I know, no, I'm not correcting you, but the thing is, you know, a diver takes the pictures yeah. in the water, yeah. and there's some sometimes like the one underwater. I was in the water, but I'm still <laughs> on another boat, so I'm on the water. That makes a difference. Yeah, no, this is like my biggest passion, and this is my niche I found, and I think this is again something that is very, very important, and I like to repeat that on that stage. Becoming a professional photographer, it's not an easy thing, but as soon as you're able to find your niche that you can grow into, then it makes this whole thing a lot easier for you. And this is what I found within sailing. And this is why I do most of my photography in sailing um, mm -hmm. instead of elsewhere. Okay. Great. So uh, let's see some of uh, his captured image. Hmm. So this is the one. Then this is the, uh, that ah, one. Was, uh, this one. I recognize that bridge. Habra bridge. Okay. So when you when you go my website um, mm -hmm. and open the chapter of uh, my images that I took at Kolkata, there is a, a, I think one or two uh, from the same area with the same bridge in the background. Very powerful. That's that's the perfect lighting there, huh? When was that? Um, um, just. Uh, towards the end of the right? yeah, 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 yeah. Morning or oh, morning or evening? Sorry. No, no, no. Evening. It evening. Was evening. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I I actually wanted to get a clear shot without people in there, but then I thought that you know people bathing and people uh, praying uh, is a part of that place. Can I ask so you how? Can I ask you how old you are? I am eighteen right now. Because when I was, I'm, I'm 28, but when I was your age, yeah. um, maybe a little bit younger, and I started my photography, I was the same. I didn't like pick people in my pictures. Now, I want to have picked people in my pictures every time. In, a, in they, every picture. <laughs> they, they, they make your pictures alive. Yeah. And you, you did it really nicely, especially with a woman with some 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 with a with a uh, red scarf you know yeah. there's the little lighting coming through and gives a little bit of highlight on the back of her on the back side yeah on the back side mm -hmm. and that's amazing that makes the picture otherwise it's it's yeah it's nice but it it's makes it really nice the way it is cool great shot thanks a lot hmm Someone was angry at you, huh? Uh, actually, actually, she was she was annoyed because uh, this was taken in Pushkar, Rajasthan. So you know, um, there's a fair, there's an annual fair there, and uh, uh, people who are who like dress up now, they ask for money, so uh, only then they let you shoot because oh. they think that they think that you uh. you'll be making money out of it, so they should also benefit from it. So that's why they ask money for. But I did, I thought that she was a little girl. I shouldn't give her money. So I took and I took a shot, and she was kind of pissed at me, and she started hitting me with a little broom thing, I think, <laughs> and I ran away. Okay, this is again we spoke about that earlier uh, about ethics, huh? So, ethics, um, yeah. Actually, it's, actually, it's, actually, uh, I I I would like you knew, to you knew you knew this is gonna happen. You know, someone asked for money. Um, for a reason, you know, I don't want to. I don't want to put myself into the political situation in here because I know so too little about it. You should know better. But I think this is how some people make money, and there's pretty probably a lot of people taking pictures of them. And if this is their idea, you should appreciate it, and you know that it was a risky situation for you to take picture. It's a great shot, and I think the the angry face makes it because otherwise, I think this kid would have been smiling. Mm -hmm. um, but again, um, it's always okay. important to be yeah. a bit careful and showing respect to people. Can I say something that uh, actually uh, it was just just an assumption that she she wanted money. I don't know really why. I think she was just naughty. I think because okay. she was no, just no, no. like like I said. I don't I don't want to get into it too much. Um, I just wanted to repeat the point that it's always important that you show respect to people. Yeah. 
and uh, you have to listen to what they want from you and it's not worth risking something when someone attacks you like yeah. the person did to you um about a photo it's a great it's a great shot but um it's just for general general speaking to everyone who's listening to us um because you can easily harm someone with your photographer as well because you take the shot you take the shot home you know what you can do with it but uh, you never know what the person feels when you take the picture because it's not a victim but it's it doesn't have the power as you have and you as a photographer are a very powerful person and it's your decision making um that you that you bring in place when you take this shot just wanted to mention that it has nothing to do with this picture in particular it's just a general speaking mentioning uh like ethical point of view of photography yeah, yeah. that is absolutely fine yeah so those are some of his clicks this is out that was outside pushkar the previous mm -hmm. one nice yeah you have your, you have a very good timing uh when you take your photographs i like that it's a good mixture of landscapes and portraits and it seems that you are very he's very good at it like of lighting yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. nice thank you that's that's great shot oh your travel pictures huh <laughs> <laughs> i have not traveled much but uh the i have only traveled to three places till now but uh, i make the best of i try to make the best out of it oh great that's that's a very powerful one as well mm. i think it shows a moshe in the background here huh? and this is the tibetan refugee center yeah. this is mm. not that, this yeah, is not this yeah very very good work um yeah, obviously, I need to see more to understand the full story, but it seems there is some story and um, try try to hold on your stories. That's very important. Story comes first. Yeah, so uh, thank you so much, Kushal. And uh, I think we have uh, uh, we have come to an end of this session. So thank you so much, Felix. It's, it's like a long session and thank, thanks a lot. Thank you so much on behalf of mm. all the all my students uh, on behalf of all my audience thank you so much for taking out to your from your time and like giving such such uh, kind of lessons like uh, for sharing your experience as well as some techniques so thank you so much so if you want to say you. something like for yeah. the budding photographers like within few lines then we are going to end this live session Thank you very much. Um, yeah, it was a great, great time. Um, it was longer than I thought. Yeah, it was, especially because we had a brief session beforehand to get some things organized, and that was already an hour. Now we are reaching the four hours mark. Um, yes. <laughs> um, thank you very much. Um, I was very, very happy when you asked me joining this uh, conversation here today. Um, I've seen a lot, very great shots of everybody who was in happy to show some of um, their images keep going keep fighting for what you love the most and this is what we've got in common this is photography yeah um, i'm very happy to answer some further questions um i think you're gonna maybe show my instagram account once again this is uh Absolutely. Let me... you've got my, you've yeah. got my name uh, next to my screen here and if you Instagram that, you will find me. Um, would be nice to stay in touch with everyone. I'm hoping to speak to you at some point again. And I wish you the very best in those very, yeah, um, serious times. It's very stormy times. And I hope all your families are well. I hope uh, the lockdown will ease at some point soon. So this is your Instagram ID. Yeah, that's my Instagram so ID. This is the maybe user ID. Maybe something has already changed in the followers. I'm I'm not very active, but I should be way more have, um, active to gain some more followers. But I'm always sharing some some news as well, and there's more to see soon. I promise to you all. But again, um, stay healthy, stay well. Um, COVID-19 is something that we all have to take serious. I would like to mention that at some point. I hope I'm allowed to. So I did. Um, and and yeah. uh, let it's me share your uh, website also. So 
So yeah, she's doing especially, great, right? so. especially I lead um, is something that I have strong connection to, and maybe you have me as a visitor sometime soon again. Yeah. So thank you so much. So keep in touch, and like uh, I would love to see some of some of your more works. So again, thanks a lot. So we are going to end the session here. So stay tuned and follow your passion. Thank you. Thank you very much. You too. Super. Thank mm -hmm. you very much. Bye bye, thank everyone. You. Bye.